It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, back for another week of uh, Brilliant Idiot shit, okay? Let's not act like you don't know what the fuck we do here. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, Andrew, how was your week? Uh, it was good. It was good. Did it, did it feel like Groundhog Day? Did it feel like a rerun of a bunch of shit you've been doing? Probably. I mean, the days are all starting to blend together, but uh, I'm held yeah. together by this content. That's what's giving me a real schedule. Content. You know yes, the content. Break that down. So you have like a calendar, like you like you can tell the days apart based off content. Oh, of course. I know okay. we're doing idiots on a Wednesday. I know we're doing flagrant on a Monday night. I know uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're working on the monologue. You know, you. Patreon for flagrant on a Thursday. So it's just like that's what creates the schedule for me. It's really Pre- interesting how it just blends itself in, right? Like there are no weekends. Oh. There are no weekends. Nah, you know, I, I'm gonna be. I feel. I feel the weekends. Only reason I feel the weekends because I get to sleep in. I right. actually got to sleep in this morning because um. Well, we're recording this on Wednesday, mm-hmm. but I guess we had a fucking tropical storm here. Yeah, you felt it. I mean, I shit. My Wi-Fi was out. I didn't even realize it. The really? whole Wi-Fi was in the whole area. But I guess it was a thing because I saw uh even Elvis Duran. Ha- happy, happy belated. Today's his born day. Happy born day to Elvis Duran. By the time you're hearing this, it'll be uh belated, but. I even saw him say that his Wi-Fi was out, and I know Envy's Wi-Fi was out because he had to go to his office. So I don't know. I guess that's the thing. The, the fucking Wi-Fi was out, so he couldn't even do shit this morning. So I went back to sleep. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on one second. There's just this bug in the room. I just want to get it out of the room. I'm don't sorry. kill the bug, bro. I told you there was Don't one. kill the bug. What kind of bug is it, man? It's a just, fly. Just get a, that's it. Get it. No, get a napkin. Why? Pick the bug Why up. Toss it outside, bro. Right now? Don't kill the bug. Is a fly? Yes. Why y'all? Oh, now nah, flies, flies can get it. Now nah, flies can get it. Flies get it's it. It's a fly. Now nah, we get we get I get flies the fuck out of here. You know what you need for flies? You need the old school fly swatter that your grandma used to have back in the day. Yep. They still sell those shit, man. When you I think about it, them. when you think about it, those were the most disgusting weapons ever. Because all you would do is kill flies and it'd be blood and fly guts all over it. But didn't nobody ever wash no goddamn fly swatter? <laughs> That would be a fair factor challenge to kiss the fly swatter that's been sitting in your grandma's house for years. Hell. And by the way, the fly swatter is one of the most illest inventions ever. Cause that shit Alex got in his hand, flies laugh at that shit. <laughs> you think that, hey, you think you swinging that shit fast? Really, that fly not, will not look going. at that shit and be like, this motherfucker really think he about to hit me with that? You know what I do though? I just you won't spray you won't get near him. I just spray the flies with like um, bleach or something like that. That's cheating. I never did cheating? that. I, do they have fly spray? I don't think they got they fly spray. Like fly they got raid spray. ferocious. But look, you spray it. It's not gonna hit them automatically, but it hits them slowly. Because I've been finding, I found like a dead my fly bad. randomly. Let's, like, oh, I got them. Let's this yo, my bad. Let's start. Slowly. Oh, there it is. Yo, yo. Yeah. Let's. Matter of fact. This is a great way to segue into positively brilliant or what a fuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's start. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> why are Let's you no, we don't, we're not starting over. This is great content. No, no, no why, listen. Wait, this is great content. Why this is going really to start over. worried about a fly, This, this is though. great content. Let me tell you us. something. It's like the Breaking Bad episode. Let me tell you something about the fucking fly, bro. Okay. The fly swatter is the last great invention that was made in America that wasn't made in China, bro. The last great thing that the fucking Americans made. That the Chinese that's in America that Chinese didn't make is the fly swatter. Really? That thing that Andrew, I mean that Alex has in his hand, flies laugh at that shit, bro. <laughs> flies see that shit coming and that motherfucker start moving like Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. He's laughing at you, Alex. It's something about the fly swatter, the way that the the the, the net is designed too. with the holes in it. For whatever reason, flies can't see that shit coming, bro. See, look at him. He keeps I'll missing just kill it. That shit. No, he because I'll no, just he didn't. Kill that he shit. Didn't. I'll just kill that he shit. Didn't. Liar. Murdered He's a liar. Murdered You're that lying. fly, bro. You bombed Iraq and there was no weapons of mass destruction yeah. there. You're fucking we lying, didn't need Alex. One. No, you we didn't. need a little paper. Stop. Yo, you killed that shit, Al. 
No, oh, you did it. Oh, there's another fly as well. That's the same oh, no. fly. <laughs> That's the same oh, fly. That fly. Now, now, now you fucking with y'all. Fly. You're like, these New Yorkers don't know how to kill no goddamn fly. <laughs> Yo. I'm telling you, I, listen. I, first fly. of all, I hate when Southerners do that shit. Anytime a New Yorker <laughs> bad at anything, oh, New Yorkers don't know how to barbecue no fucking steak. Or New Yorkers don't know how to cross no fucking street. Listen. What is this? Yo? Why is it because we're know. from New York? You think we all got flies up here? You know, flies migrated from the south to New York because they realized y'all ain't had no fucking fly swatters. It was like, yo, they don't got no. That's no migrated. They, they have the they fly. have no defense against us in New York City. Look, Andrew about to use his hat because he, he, he told me not to kill him. I was gonna scoop him up and I was gonna take Listen. him out the fucking uh, room, dude. Yo, the, yo, the fly is gonna be sitting around with his boys tonight, drinking out of somebody's cup. Like, yo, man, you wouldn't believe what happened earlier. Yo, it was these two guys. It was this white dude and this Puerto Rican can do. Yo, they was trying to kill me with record album covers and hats. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing worked. It was like, really? Yo, we got to go over there. What they had over there? A big cup of water. <laughs> I'm telling you. What else did you see this week that was positively brilliant other than the fly swatter? Man. <laughs> I don't know, man. What about you? What was your positively brilliant this week? Um, I got to give it up for the NBA. Why? I just like I like how they I like how they figured it out while other uh, major league sports organizations haven't. But I mean, it's it's a simple reason for that. It's what the bubble? Like ba- yeah, basketball is just easier to contain. That's all. It's just mm-hmm. easier to contain. You know what I mean? Because all you need is a court, <laughs> right? Yeah, and you, and you get everybody in one place. You know, uh, the teams are smaller. It's like what twelve people per team. I don't know how many. You know, with coaches and everything else, I don't know how much people are actually on a team, but I think I read somewhere it was like 300 or a little bit more than 300. Right. So it's just easier to contain. You invite a few media people in, lock the whole shit down, and have tournament tournament style basketball, and it looks fun. It looks dope. I'm not gonna find it. Looks like it looks like NBA uh, 2K to me. Do you think that the staff? So right now, nobody's in the bubble. Nobody's out of the bubble. Yes. Right. What do you mean? Nobody's in the bubble. Like the bubble, uh, nobody can go into the bubble. No one can come yeah, out. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. you're gotcha. just locked yeah. in and that's just whatever. It's its own yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. Do you think that the NBA players will start to try to have sex with the staff that's working the bubble? Mm. If they're smart, no. Um, has nothing to do with the bubble and everything to do with the Me Too Times Up movement. No need to get no goddamn... <laughs> Really what? what you just said. Why? Yeah, no need. No need. <laughs> These no are need guys that are NBA players. They're getting their dick sucked before every game that they want. They got a chick in every different city. You know no what I'm saying? Get, what about their no, wives at no home? Need to get like, me too what in the about bubble? them? <laughs> no need Wait, to get me too in the bubble. You think NBA players are 100% faithful? What about the single NBA players? First of all, also, how, how you get 10 different baby mamas? What does Dwight Howard have? Stop. He got 10 different baby mamas. 80% of the NBA is black. Black men don't cheat. So the ones that are not with somebody are not in a committed relationship. They just got to, who cares? Why do you need to have sex? Why do you need to have sex? No, why do you need, I'm not doing Why do you need right to have now. sex? Is that the right question now. you just I'm asked? With you, right now. you don't need to have sex, but there's nothing you could do in the bubble. There's nothing going on. You can't even hang okay, out with well, people it's, inside. It's constant basketball. Say what? It's, it's constant basketball, right? Constant basketball. You know, they're playing games. It's actually a good bonding experience, exactly. to be honest with you. It's like summer camp. Y'all are really like, bullshitting right now. You don't like, think that guys like are going to be trying to get their dick sucked by the sec- secretary of the hotel? You don't think the cleany lady before people we come shooting out, so that before, shot? Before this it was happening, what were they doing before? Getting they their weren't... dick sucked? Bro, you so prehistoric, bro. It's 2020, bro. <laughs> Why bro. would I have to get my dick sucked by a woman? All these <laughs> men around here? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why do why do I gotta shoot at that basket in 2020? Listen, First of all, you're 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 you're, you're not acknowledging bro, the facts. All of the undercover. Listen, listen. All, all, I gotta, all I gotta say is yabba dabba do, bro. I it's, guess I'm pretty it, it, it's, it's called setting the screen. All right, all right. I set a screen. You're acting like in 2020, there's no undercover gay basketball players. They are in heaven in that ball. Oh, they're loving it. That's the dream, bro. Ba, 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 ba. I'm loving it. That's the okay. dream. Yes, they yeah. are. What are you talking about? So do you think that they're going to take advantage of like some like buy NBA players, but like have never gone that way? Because oh, yeah, the yeah, NBA yeah, 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 yeah. is going gay in this bubble, guaranteed. 
No, uh, the, the gay NBA players getting it in. This is they're perfect. getting it in. They but do you think in. that they're going to flip any straights? I don't. It's not like jail, bro. I don't think it's. I that think bad. it's like jail. It's not. Think it's I think it's jail. like jail. No, it's what not. did Ellen say? She says it's the same a, thing. It's not Shut a life up. sentence, yeah. though. Did it's not a life sentence, but it's still. not a life sentence. If it was, I, I don't think you even start contemplating that kind of stuff unless you get a life sentence, bro. You were going from daily dick sucks to just guys. <laughs> Okay, it's just guys. What if your daily dick sucks with just guys? So now you're chilling. Nothing has changed. Your life now is good. In. Matter of now fact, <laughs> we should look at who's the most relaxed in the bubble. If you yo. really want to know, yo. if you really want to know. Yo, yo if you're yo. a gay NBA player, you're probably sitting around like, did I die of Corona and go to heaven? Yeah, when sorry. you're looking around that bubble? 100%. Oh my 100%. Taylor, I don't know why you're shocked to see this. Who's your favorite NBA player? Um, they could be getting win. their crew. <laughs> Who's your favorite NBA player? He passed away. Current NBA Current player. Current NBA Taylor. player. Why you got to make it sad? <laughs> the fuck, bro? Current NBA player, I don't Taylor. have one. You don't like anybody in the NBA? I mean, they're cool, but I can't like name one off the bat. If you worked at the hotel, would you be excited if you were single, hypothetically speaking? Your would favorite? I be excited? Yeah. All you're one of like nice looking bodies walking around. Yeah. And you're one of ten girls, and there's all these guys filled with testosterone to the brim. I'm not a hoe. So Who no. said you're a hoe? What that no got to do with you being a hoe? hoe? Y'all could go on a yo, walk. Yo, time out, time out, time out. Don't talk to Taylor today. Taylor's right. on one, yo. Taylor's on one. Yo, Chris was talking to Taylor. Chris said. Taylor was talking about Black is King, right? And Taylor was like, I fell asleep. So Beyonce, I mean, Chris said, so you fell asleep to your queen? Taylor said, why I gotta be a coon? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Like, what? What? Whoa, dude. Whoa, dude. You Yo, are... his internet was going in now. Nah, it's not like he stop, said coon. Stop, stop, stop. Andrew, Andrew specifically said to you, you're a one of 10 women. Mm -hmm. You have a choice. Of all of these different men, mm -hmm. you said, I'm not a hoe. What because, that got to do with anything? What does that have to do with it? Can I tell you what it was, Charla? Because she started thinking of some hoe things. That's why. <laughs> That's why she started thinking of some whole things, and then no, I, I, it's not, it's exactly well, like yeah, you know what it is. It's like when you come home late and your girl's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" You're like, "I wasn't cheating." And she's like, "Wait, I never asked you if you were cheating." I, was, but I wasn't anyway. I am, I am not looking at Pornhub. Yeah, I'm not watching no old women on Pornhub. What are you talking about? Yeah, you just outed yourself. So you were thinking of whole stuff. Because what else? What's the end of the question? Taylor, you are a hold you on. are you hold are a on. young Taylor. You are a young black woman who can make her own decisions. Own I know. You are some, if you are somewhere and it's a it's a smorgasbord of men to choose mm -hmm. from, and you choose to sleep a with one, even if you choose to sleep with two, that don't make you a hoe. That don't make. I make know you a it hoe. doesn't, but, but they're what? not. They're gonna try to treat me like one and not take me seriously. Why not? So. You figure, just don't fuck. Don't fuck one of the duos. Don't fuck Harden and Westbrook. That's a don't good point. Don't fuck people on the same team for don't, real. Yeah, don't fuck don't people fuck that are beefing. Don't fuck nobody on the same team. Don't, don't fuck, fuck people who are beefing. Also, don't fuck twins. <laughs> don't fuck Kawhi and Paul George. Yeah. You got to no, don't, gotta... don't fuck Luca and, and Porzingis. Yeah. That's all. You got to go different division. Eastern Conference, Western Conference. Back, back and forth. <laughs> That's what you got to do. For real. <laughs> You can't keep the coochie in one conference. All right, up. You gonna fuck? That's, you, that's the bubble you, you, rule. You gonna fuck Zion and Brandon Ingram, and then Come wonder on. why they call you out your name? Yeah. Come on. You, and, and another thing that you need to start doing is start. You need to watch that Beyonce thing so you can put some respect on yourself. Yeah. Because I was talking about you building a relationship yeah. with a successful man. Word up. I wasn't yeah. talking about no hoe shit. You just you just jumped out there and volunteered the hoe yeah. shit. I ain't no hoe. I'm not sucking anyone's dick. We we're like, we didn't ask you about dick Nobody sucking. Nobody said that. Nobody yeah. said that. No doubt. All I told you was that you are a, 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 a vibrant, a vibrant young woman who would have the pick of the litter there. Might even leave with a husband. You might Don't leave know. with a You get married at Magic Kingdom. I definitely wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For in Orlando, yo, yo. you might yo, as well. This is crazy. We over here thinking nice, wholesome stuff about, about how you. you can get wifed up. And you just out here talk, thinking about the trains that could get ran on you. That's the thing. Taylor. That's this the thing disgusting. with girls these days. That's the thing with it's girls disgusting. these days is protect, projecting their 
sex nonsense on us, and that's not <laughs> what disgusting. we're about over oh, here. Bro, we thought you were going to have disgusting. some conversations, play a couple rounds of golf with Dwight I Howard. I cannot stand you, but no doubt, y'all won. Y'all won that round. Go ahead. It's okay. not. A, it's not. You know what? It's not a game to be won. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's really not a game to you. It's not Taylor. a game, bro. It's not. It's not a game. We're out here because so we care about you. So you don't like the new NBA format shows? No, it's not that I don't like it. I actually think they did a really good job visually. It looks fine. <laughs> For me, it doesn't mean anything yet. Really? Like I'm, I'm seeing the games. And I'm like, what is it? It's like still the regular season. I'm like what? Eh. Like these games to me are like preseason. It feels like preseason. One week, once we get in the playoffs, I think I'm gonna take it seriously. But these games, I could give a fuck about. Yeah, they balling though. I'm not gonna lie. Like they balling. I mean, I guess because they don't have anything to do but play ball, mm. and they haven't played ball in months. Yeah, they they balling. Yeah, they're going for it. Yeah, I think so. The one question I have is like, are you gonna get the same effort from the players when? without the crowd there that's like cheering them on like you know those moments when it's like Steph Curry is going crazy he just hits four threes in a row and the crowd's erupting and everybody's losing it are you going to get those same moments without the crowd I would love to know that's a great question and I would love to know what is the percentage of crowd energy that people take in and what I mean by that is when you're an NBA player a certain portion of you a certain percentage of you on that court has to block all that shit out, right? Yeah. And, and you have to do that home or away because I don't think it's something you can turn on or off. Meaning like if you're on a away court and people are booing the shit out of you, you got to block that out. Mm -hmm. But if you're at home and people are even cheering you, you still kind of got to block that out just to perform and get in here. It's yeah. like, it's kind of like what my daddy used to say, you're never as good as they say you are and you're never as bad as they say you are. So you don't really pay attention to either or. I wonder how much, of, what's the percentage of, of, of just crowd noise and crowd crowd energy they block off and don't take in. Yeah, or maybe it's something that inspires them either way. Like some people might get inspired by the booze. True. You know, and it motivates True. them. It's like, oh, I'm going to lock this guy up now. There's no way he's going to score on me if everybody's going to be booing me like that. You know, yeah, I can't I mean, wait to give them buckets. But I, I will say the one thing that we don't give um, any athlete enough credit for uh, is because I think we don't recognize the mental fortitude it takes to be them. Um, our emotional fortitude it takes to be them. Because I think a lot of times when we think mental, we think IQ. So you might hear one of these guys talk in an interview and they may not be the most intellectual or articulate, but on that court or on that field, they have high levels of IQ. So I think that they have to go places in their mind that we don't go on a regular basis. <laughs> right. So I actually think not having the crowd will make for better basketball because it's going to make those players have to dig deeper mm. into their psyches. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, or it could benefit the mentally weaker players, like the players that get nervous, the players that, you know, they uh, choke under pressure. Now they're not going to feel that same level of pressure because there's not going to be 20,000 people screaming at them every yeah. time they fuck up. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be interesting. The playoffs will be interesting. I'm excited to see what happens, man. I'm really excited to too. see what happens. I am too. Um, <clears throat> positively brilliant this week. What oh, else did I see that was you know positive? Was, you know what I thought was positively brilliant? Um what? I think The Rock buying the XFL is positively brilliant because I think you could put that in the same type of bubble as you can put the uh, as the NBA did, whereas Ooh. the regular NFL, I, I think it's too big to bubble. There's just not enough football fields in that close of proximity to like lock everybody in. Yeah. So there is a chance that if the NFL gets shut down, Baseball might get shut down. All these different leagues might get shut down because Corona seems to be taking out players. There's a chance that maybe the XFL is the only football that we watch this year, and then it could blow the fuck up if they bubble why the, it. Why the fuck was the XFL so cheap? Bro. $15 million? Because I think, I don't know what you're buying. I think you're just buying the brand name. I don't think you're buying anything else besides that. It's not like really? there's, like, what else is there to buy? They don't got a stadium. They don't have, like, a... Office, they don't have anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're yeah, just yeah, buying yeah, yeah, the brand yeah, yeah. of the XFL. I was um <clears throat> that is that was a positively brilliant move. Uh I, I think it's positively brilliant for what you just said. I didn't think about that. <clears throat> I was looking at it from the angle of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who used to be an employee of a owner who actually <laughs> owned the X XFL, mm. Vince McMahon, you know, when 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 the rock used to be a wrestler. And so the rock Vince owned the WWE and the XFL. I just love to see somebody come from that to putting himself in a position to where now 
he's an owner of something. Like mm. the Rock has, the Rock has come up and become a boss mm. where he once was a worker. Right. And it start it started there. It started in the WWE. That's how the the brand of the Rock was built to become Dwayne the Rock Johnson, the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Now he's buying something that somebody he used to work for used to own. Yeah. I think that's dope. That's that's the kind of energy that I like. Yeah, so, it's kind um, of fire. It reminds me of the intern who becomes the CEO. Yeah. You know, and I think that the Rock you know, learned business somewhere along the line and and you don't see you don't see wrestlers making those kind of moves. I can't think of too many WWE superstars who went on to become as successful as the Rock after wrestling. You know? I can't think of any. Yeah. Who? who? Yeah. I, I I can't think of any. So I thought that I thought that was brilliant on his part. Um What a fucking idiot, man. <clears throat> I even hate to put put him in what a fucking idiot. Who? Cuz I I don't think I think it's, it's it goes back to what I was just saying about ball players, right? Like just because they don't articulate well when they're in interviews doesn't mean that they don't have a level of genius. And I think it takes a level of genius to be your president, bro. Yeah. Just a little bit. Because the way he handles himself in interviews <laughs> is incredible to me. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't if it wasn't the fate of America at hand, it would be the most interesting, entertaining thing to watch. Because the things he says, I hate that I understand what he means. Yeah. When he's talking about coronavirus <clears throat> and they're bringing up how many people died of coronavirus, everybody took that one clip when he said it is what it is. But in context, what he said made sense. What'd he say? He said, play, I want you to play the we clip, have, Dwayne, right? We have the, yeah. What he said, it is what it is. 150,000 people died, but it's not like we haven't been trying to do anything everything to prevent that from happening, right? So basically, what he's saying, and I, and I feel like I'm a Gemini translator because I can translate Kanye, Donald Trump, and Little <laughs> Duval. I always know what those three are talking about, right? Mm -hmm. But he's essentially saying some things are just simply out of your control. And I'm not, and, I, and listen, I, I, there's plenty of people who say he could have done more to prevent these things from happening. I'm, yes, I, I agree with those people because firing the global pandemic team in 2016 was just stupid. That's what, that, that's, what that's for. <laughs> Like you don't get rid of your insurance and then get in a car wreck and then get mad because they, you know, they won't fucking cover you or you got to come out of pocket to pay. Right. So he's basically saying some things are just out of our control and we've tried and we're tried and we're tried and we're tried, but 150,000 lives were still lost. Now, the debate there is what I just said. Did he do enough to prevent those 150,000? Let's just say for hypothetical purposes. Yes, he did. 150,000 people still died. Whether it was 150,000 or 40,000, whether it was 40,000 or 20,000, there was going to be casualties, right? Mm -hmm. You just want to keep those casualties down to a minimum. Him saying it is what it is, it's not like we didn't try our hardest to prevent this from happening. I understood what the motherfucker was trying to say. What's hard to understand about that? He said it, his tone. I what guess. was it? Like he, he well, was I, I, I mean, listen, whenever, it's, whenever you got over 150,000 people dying, you can't just say it is what it is. Because yeah. if, if that was five of your family members who died in that, you wouldn't talk on it like that. And no, it'd be a complete tragedy. It'd be all that's horrible. That's what I'm saying. But so, so we, it would we, should, be, we should look like that. It would be what it is. I have um, said, <laughs> I know I've said that a lot this summer, you know, because I had two friends who committed suicide. In <clears throat> and after a while, that is one of the coping, coping mechanisms for it, right? Mm -hmm. You just got to accept it for what it is. Life is fucked up, man. Life is not fair. Yeah. <laughs> like Life is not going to go your way all the time. That's mm -hmm. why I always say I don't believe in good or bad. I just believe in life being one long process. Mm. And it's just a series of experiences. Mm. Some of those experiences are going to hurt. Some of those experiences are going to help. I think all those experiences, you know, help you become who you ultimately are going to be, though. Yes. Now, in the case of America, is there something to learn from this situation? Of course it will be. Do we see the lesson now? Maybe not. Maybe some of us do. Maybe some of us don't. Maybe we won't realize it till two, three years down the line. Maybe it's just a major fuck up. 
And guess what? When major fuck ups happen, things like this happen. People yeah. die. People get sick. Sadly, that's just. So I'm about to say that's just the way that it is. So whether you're saying it is what it is, that's just the, the way, way it, that is. it is. But it I understand. Is. I understand when people are sensitive and they've they've had something horrible happen to them. They want empathy. They want concern. And maybe that's the role of a president. You know, maybe that's one of the things Obama was so great at or Clinton was so great at is that he could talk to the moment in a way that would kind of console people and make people feel more comfortable. And, and that's why I put him in the what a fucking idiot category. Right. Because Trump all you got to do is show some empathy. He has no empathy. Trump doesn't have that gear. He's not. He, None. He's, he's kind of like Kanye in the way he communicates, you know, like. Kind of? Yeah, like, like in a, kind of okay, very similar, and and yes. I mean that I mean that in terms of of a compliment and a diss because if it's something that resonates with people that Kanye says, right, it's exalted. People love it. George Bush, George Bush, Bush don't people. care about black people. <laughs> Two people talk about that to this day. He just spoke to the feelings, and I'm sure I'm sure Trump has a million lines that are similar to that. Right. Which people are like, yeah, fake news. Yeah. Crooked Hillary. Yeah. He knows how to like market ideas. But if you're going to him and you're like, it, he's not the guy that you go to and be like, I'm feeling sad today. He's going to be like, he's an old school father. Yeah. It is what the fuck it is. Man, the fuck up. Man up. What you mean you feel sad? What's <laughs> what sad? What you mean you feel sad? Put some makeup so on. You guys, <laughs> you guys don't think he has a responsibility as the person effectively in charge of the federal government for coordinating this country's response to that. You guys are just going to let him off the hook for that. And it is what it is. Chris, you're not no. listening. Chris, I'm Chris, hearing everything no. you're saying. And Chris. by the way, you ended it with just like how Trump ended it. You said it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris. Okay. Yeah, That's Chris. Exactly what, That's not what, what we're saying. saying. Out, what we're saying is exactly what you're saying, Chris. Yes, as president, Yo. he should have empathy. He Chris has a responsibility. He has a responsibility to keep the temperature of the the country down, but he's not capable of doing that. Listen, Chris he's just not. wants division in this country, bro. We all know what side Chris is on. Chris oh, is on, working goodbye. for the Chinese. I'm <laughs> 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 all to his ass. Hey, Chris. He said, bye, hey, boy, to you. Yeah, hey, bro, bro. Chris. Don't think I'm not all to Chris. you, bro. That's Yo, CCP Chris. over there. That's Yo, Chris, CCP. Hey, come on, come on. Chris didn't even mute. Chris got the fuck off all together. Wait, he got off the call? <laughs> he did? He got off the call all together. Yeah, because he knows who else was listening. <laughs> what Chris he is, knows what Chris, who else was listening, bro. What, what Chris is, is failing to realize we're saying exactly what he's saying. He just said it in a much more articulate, intelligent, Chris, book writery way. Chris wants that division, bro. You know where no, Chris is right now? Chris Chris is sitting in a, in a temple about 1,000 stairs into the sky, okay? Above the cloud line, you got to walk up 1,000 straight stairs to get there. And he's, he's trying to stoke that division, bro. He's trying to tear us apart, tear this country apart. To benefit no, one place, oh, no, 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 I can't. Uh, th th there's nobody doing a better job of that than Donald Trump, though. And the reason Donald Trump is doing a great job of that is to what we're saying and Chris is saying is because he doesn't know how to bring people together. He just doesn't know how to do it. It's not in him. Like it's he, like you Yo, said, he doesn't have that gear, bro. It's, it's not only a gear. It's a practice, right? If you're a business, if you're a businessman or woman, Taylor. You have to appease the people that support your business. So he's just treating the, the country like his business. And he's appeasing his supporters. The customer's always right. It don't matter if the customer is a staunch, diehard, you know, economic conservative or maybe a racist motherfucker who got Republican values. He is appeasing the customer. The customer's always right. And he don't give I'm a fuck about the competition. But, but I'm going to tell you what he <laughs> fucked up, Schultz. Where's that? When you say it is what it is to 150,000 people, bro, some of your customers got, got died too. Mm -hmm. Yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm some not, of your customers' not, relatives um, are dead as well. I'm not, like what, what is it called? What am I saying? Uh, what am I trying to say? Like, I'm not saying it's okay what he said. It was stupid. It was dumb from a PR perspective. Like, let's say that's, that's how you feel. Even if that's how you feel, you got to know better than to <laughs> say that. He can't. This is a guy who doesn't listen to anybody. Yeah. He, he doesn't listen to any notes. I'm sure that he has people around him that prep him for this shit, but he don't remember none of this shit. Like, so he goes with his feelings. Yeah. He's a guy who always moves off emotion, not strategy. And by the way, it's probably worked for him his whole fucking life for the most part. You, you saw that with John Lewis comment. What's the John Lewis thing? <laughs> you want to say? John, I didn't John, watch the whole John. interview. What was it? 
I'm gonna be honest. See, and here, here I go. Here, here, here you go, I, Charlotte. Here you go. <laughs> it is what it is. See, time it out. Is what time out. Here you go. Once say. again. Once again. I'm playing white devil's advocate here. Hey, what he hey, said hey, about hey, what he said hey. about Representative John Lewis was all the way fucked up. But I didn't expect anything less. Of He's course. a petty motherfucker. Of he course. said John Lewis didn't come to my inauguration. Why didn't he come to the inauguration? Because he doesn't agree with Donald Trump and Donald Trump's policies, of course. Trump is like, he didn't come to my inauguration. Now, Lil Boosie did an interview with DJ Vlad a long time ago, yeah. maybe a couple years ago. Yep. And Boosie said, if I don't like you, I'm not going to pretend to like you after you're dead. Interesting. He said, if I don't like you, he said, if it was F you when you was alive, it was going to be F you when you was dead. We say keep the same energy. Yeah. But that was so do we respect it? No. Was he wrong as the leader of the, of the, of the country? Yes. But as a human? Eh, that's his right. If he don't, that's his right to say, yeah. yo, I don't rock with John Lewis. I didn't rock with John Lewis in the life. He said, I didn't know him. I didn't know the man. Yeah. I didn't know the man. He didn't come to my inauguration. I know that much. So, eh. I mean, you, knew, get, him, you knew him enough to know he didn't he, come exactly. to the inauguration. Because <clears throat> he's petty. He's the type of, to keep names. Who right. didn't come? Who didn't come to my inauguration? Write that name down. I remember that in the future. Because yeah. by the way, he gave it up to Herman Cain. Yeah. Even though he's the, even though He's partly to blame for Herman Cain not being here no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. as a leader, you gathered all those people together knowing that the country wasn't ready for that type of congregation yet. This man caught coronavirus. This man passed away. Mm -hmm. Didn't wear no mask. Was on Twitter saying how, yo, we don't have to wear no mask. America's tired of it. Now he's not here anymore. That's mm. why I don't, certain things I don't like. You can't play with certain energies, bro. You know, mm. you just don't do that because mm. you just never know. So Herman Cain played with that energy and he died from that energy. Hmm. Trump gave it up to him. Trump gave him a nice long Twitter rant or a nice long Instagram caption, whatever it was, said hmm. he was a great man in all of this because he knew him and because Herman Cain supported him. So Trump is really a guy that's like, yo, if you ride with me, I ride with you. If it's F me, it's F you for life and in death. Yeah, it is interesting. It's like relatable in your favorite rapper, but... It's not what you want in your president. Yeah. I think that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. So then we got to think even, about. Hey, not even just your favorite rapper. You're just any, when, when you're in a position where you control the, the country. Yeah. And you're over the country. Bro, you just can't move like everybody else. Maybe we want our presence to be fake. And maybe Trump isn't fake enough for us. And maybe that's why we get upset. Like, we want our presidents to lie to us. We want our presidents to give us hope. We want our presidents to be almost like our parents when we're kids who are going to just tell us everything's going to be all right. We're going to figure out everything and everything's fine. And um, when we don't get that from our president, whatever side doesn't get that gets enraged. I think, um, I think you're right. And I think we want that from everybody. This is actually yeah. a good deep dive. I think I think we want that from everybody. I think in order to get to that that place of real healing, that place of real honesty, I have to start with the bullshit. Like before I tell you that you did something wrong, I got to tell you how great you are. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got, that's just the yeah. era we live in. Yeah. You might not receive it. If I if 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 I if I if I just come out boom out the gate and I'm telling you, yo, you were, you were effed up for this and you were effed up for that and you were wrong for this, yada, yada, yada. You might not receive it. But if I take that medicine, put a little sugar in it and give it to you that way, you know? Yeah. Remember when you was a kid and they take the spoon and you're airplane, airplane, runway. I, you have to do that. You just do. People don't like shit straight with no chaser as much as we say we do. Hmm. Good or bad. Yeah. Good or bad. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Like, that's why what, what, they sit you down and they say, okay, I got good news and I got bad news. Which one you want first? Uh, that, the answer to that question really determines what type of person you are. Right. Seriously. Can you handle the bad news first? Most people can't. Nobody no. wants bad news. Nobody wants bad news. And nobody wants, to be honest, like, we do want the truth, but we want it in a way that desensitizes us first. And maybe that's what you're saying, like building them up. Maybe that's what you're saying. Like we want to be understood before we get the truth. Like 
if you got to tell somebody who they are, you got to tell somebody some horrible news about something, their feelings need to be acknowledged first. And that's something that Trump does not do. That's something that Kanye does not do. That's something a lot of just poor communicators do. And I'm not going to call Trump or Kanye poor communicators, even though I have, because they're exceptional at communicating certain things. Right? Like, if you listen to Kanye, you listen to Trump, you listen to certain people, they're just kind of funny and they'll make points that some people might seem, uh, might say, are like brave to say because others wouldn't say them in that situation. So you kind of value that. But at the same time, if it's ever something that you're not ready to hear, you don't want to hear, it stings that much more because there's no filter whatsoever. There's no chaser. You just got to take that shot straight. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Wow, are they good communicators? I, I, <laughs> I think I they can't are. call them like all across the board, but they have genius in their communication. Like you cannot deny there's genius in Trump's communication because he has all these words that we continue to use. It's great marketing. And you cannot deny Kanye's genius in his communication because he can stir shit up. He knows how to fucking rile people up. But at yeah, the same I think time, anybody who affects. Anybody who is able to make you give a fuck about every word they say has to be a great communicator. Mm. Because whether you're breaking down those words, the shit on them, or you're bigging up those words because you loved what they said, you're hanging on to every word. And I think great communicators make you know how to hang, make great communicators know how to make people hang on to every word. Yeah. And why do we hang on? I really don't know. In the case of Kanye, I think we hang on because there was a period where Kanye said a lot of things that people agreed with. And and you got to think, Kanye is not just, you know, we're talking about interviews and rants and shit like that, but this is a guy who gave you multitudes, I mean, a, a plethora of music. So it's a bunch of words that people live and die by from Kanye West. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's albums that have gotten people through. So he's a rapper. So as a rapper... That your whole method is is is, is uh, orating, right? So it's, mm. you're you're giving people these words and delivering these words, and people hold on to them. And then you know when you did step out and do these rants, whether it was George Bush doesn't care about black people, or Beyonce's album was better than Taylor Swift, or just these verbal screams of consciousness where you have seemingly spoke things into existence. You told people what you were going to do in the fashion world. Told people what you were going to do in the sneaker world. You have enough currency out there with your words, right? Because that's really what we're discussing: the economy of words. You have enough. <laughs> cachet out there with your words that people hold on to them. So I think in the case of Kanye, people still hold on because they're still waiting for that, that brilliance that we once knew, you know, what about, what about in the case of someone like a Takashi six, nine, it's like, how is he so good at maintaining the conversation and maintaining a level of curiosity? And what do you think that he does effectively? Yeah. I mean, at this point, and I actually, I actually Throw posted it. this this morning. I posted this this morning on Instagram. Um, people would rather pull out the phone and record the car crash as opposed to saying something to a person that may prevent the car crash from happening. So let's not confuse hanging on to somebody's every word with people watching a car crash because if everybody is simp- as if everybody is waiting for something bad <laughs> to happen to you mm. they're not paying attention to you because what you're what you're saying is so intriguing so you don't think there's any people mm. that are just like curious about him curious of how it's going to end yes but if they watch the music video they know that it didn't end in the music video so well, they want they, they're they still want they want they want to keep they want to keep justifying <clears throat> they want to keep justifying what they already feel. Which is? Something bad is going to happen to the kids. So you're saying they're following the story as it comes to an end. They're watching, they're watching the car waiting for it to crash. It's like this guy's drunk. He's got a mask on. Uh, he's got his eyes covered. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, smoking yeah. weed. Yeah, 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 He's letting the car drive by itself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before he runs into somebody. And, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think it's a good, it's a good description because... He's done an amazing job of garnering attention without quality. And he even talks about the lack of quality, right? He has that Angie Martinez interview where he's like, my music's trash. I mean, it's hot trash. Like he has this amazingly like kind of humble, self-deprecating, you know, outlook on his, on himself. 
but he knows yeah. how to like garner and continue that attention. And you're saying it's part of the car crash, and maybe that's what we're all following. I guess I don't know, but he I found wonder, a way um, to monetize it. I wonder, and you know, it's so interesting. We've always compared, you know, Takashi to Trump, um, but I kind of see the same energy in both of them at this moment. And it's kind of like a drug dealer who knows he's about to go to prison. When drug dealers know they're about to go to prison, like when they know the feds is on them and they know that any day it could be over, mm. they just start wilding. You know what I mean? It's almost like, it's, 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 it's kind of like a cry for help, almost. You know, it's, it's kind of like a desperation. Desperation has started to set in and that's when they just start to really do and say anything in order to survive because they can feel those walls closing in. And you don't know how much time you got left. In the case of Trump, it could be 90 days, but I don't think he's leaving. So, right. you know, I think he's going to at least hold on till January. You know, I've been said this. I've been said Trump is going, I don't, I don't know how, but he's going to manipulate some shit in order to find a way to stay into that, stay in that white house. And I think it's the same with, with, with the dude. I think that he, um, he might feel them walls closing in. He don't. He may not. He he may not know how long he got, and he may not give a fuck. Hmm. For real, he might, I'm gonna enjoy myself while I'm here. I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Maybe that's how he's feeling. Do you think people ever get to that state if they're not what? facing like um, fatal illness? Like, yes. do you think they're actually? You think there are guys who are just like, look, I'm probably gonna get killed within the next few years, so I'm gonna wild out until that happens. That's a that's Absolutely. a. Well, well, yeah. I mean, I know plenty of dudes like that. Like, I mean, we know really? one. Little Duvall is like that, and 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 no, not only Little Duvall. Not. Little Duvall has been accepted that he could die at any moment. No, no, and, and he he accepts that that's part of life for sure. But he's not purposely living crazy and reckless. No, well, well, not not, get... not crazy and reckless, but he's living. He's clearly living his life out loud. He says it. I'm living my best life. Like. Yeah, but he's not that. trying to do he's not like going out of his way to do things that will kill him. Like he'll he, he actually goes out of his way to do things that will make he's him living. live longer. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, he's living. He's living. I don't and by the way, I don't think I don't think dude is doing anything to get himself killed. He's clearly not. He's walking around with 100 security guards. I'm just simply saying if you know people are gunning for you, yeah. right? If you know people want you out of here, if you're not even sure, you don't know. You don't know what could happen. You're going to live your life freely as possible. All right. I got a question. He's signed to a label, right? And the label is works with him on like creating these videos and like marketing the songs and all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We have to assume, right? Mm -hmm. Intimately involved in him. I assume there are other rappers signed to that same label, no? Yeah. So why aren't they coming at the label for supporting a snitch? And why aren't they coming at the label for protecting Cause a snitch I, cause, and cause I, I enabling think they, a snitch? And Because I think they understand business. I don't think they stupid. They understand business. Like, why would the label give a fuck? Why would the label care if... But you're signed like, to that same label. So? It's business. So, so, so when it comes to business, you're okay to, like, be around snitches and that kind of stuff? Well, I don't think that they expect any of those executives to follow any of the same street codes that they do. Right. Why would they? But they don't feel uncomfortable being like part of a label that like is with snitches. I mean, even if they did, what could they do? They're, they're on the contract. Right. <laughs> so, so right. It's like, what could they do? Like what they could do? Demand a trade? Trade me to Def Jam. <laughs> you know I mean, I mean, they could camera on that shit. Wave me. Isn't that what Cameron did? Didn't he go in the building and just say, hey, I'm out. Didn't he go into Def Jam and like slap somebody around and say, I'm no longer part of this label? I don't know. I never heard Def that. Jam or something else. Wasn't there a story about that back in the day? I, I never heard that. But guess what? Even if you did, so what? If you under five albums, you got five albums. You can yeah. slap me up all you want. No, nah, he got out right. of it. He got out of the contract, apparently. <laughs> Probably because he turned in all his albums. I think he just pulled out a pistol. No. <laughs> Yo, look up the story. I might. I don't think God I'm making a camera. Damn, Adam, Andrew 22? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. God damn. I think, bro. You just, you just you, how you just make up a whole story for a camera like that? I didn't make it up. <laughs> it's not Cam. Is it someone else? Jesus Christ. 
I don't know. I've never heard that story. I don't see anything about him. Noriega? I, I, I have no idea. So what are you talking about, I, Master P, when he said... Nah, look it up. Maybe, I mean, is it one of them? <laughs> oh, oh, by you, the way. Are Ice Cube you talking about? Him nah. Being upset? Why? By the way, what? Positively brilliant. No limit documentary, man. Listen, this is why... I mean, I'm just speaking for myself right now. Hip hop is the greatest genre of music of all time, only because there has not been a genre of music that transcends generations the way hip hop has. Like, I'm, maybe I could be wrong. I'm just, I'm just speaking for for hip hop and R&B is what I grew up on, so maybe it's different for me. Andrew, you might have your fan, your 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 parents might have grew up on rock music and you might still be into a lot of these rock artists to this day. But I'm talking about the fact that Master P No Limit documentary can come on BET, debut at number one on BET and be top, be number eight in all cable programming in the top 10 throughout for all, all cable because people are so in to these iconic superhero like figures mm. that have come from this genre of hip hop. Man. It's, it's, it's actually unbelievable. So and, and Master the documentary is out right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's six parts. Uh, two parts aired last week. Um, two more parts aired last night. <clears throat> Even though we're taping this on Thursday, so I haven't seen this week. But Master P, man, he's always been such an inspiration for me because he's from the South. So you know, back in the day when you saw the Forbes list, you would see Diddy and Will Smith, and you'd be like, okay, you get it, right? But to see a guy from the South who wasn't shiny like Diddy or Will Smith, who wasn't polished like Diddy or Will Smith, but literally just had better business probably than both of them, if I'm being honest, right? Only because the deal that he decided to take, Jimmy Iovine offered Master P a million dollars to sign. Master P was like, if this white man is offering me a million, I'm worth about 30 or 40. Mm. So I got it. He said, I'm not doing it. So he said, so Jimmy Iovine told him, yo, you leave this office, this deal's off the table. He left, right? Then he went and spoke to a lawyer. It was actually Michael Jackson's lawyer. I think he had to pay the lawyer just like 25 grand just to have a conversation with him, right? Whoa. And Michael Jackson's lawyer was like, you, what you need to do is get a, a precedent and distribution deal. You get 85, let the label get 15. So he went looking for a company that would give him that. And now that he has this knowledge, <clears throat> he's on for this knowledge, he goes into priority records. That's what he ends up getting. Then he ends up selling a little bit more to ownership, like I think it was like 5%. So he could get like a quarter million dollars just for marketing and promotion. So I think it was like ended up being like 80, 20 or some shit like that. But either way, you're getting 80 percent of all profits. That's how he ended up on the fucking Forbes list. Right. And then to go in there and tell the label, look, because he would say he was looking doing the math. He's like, if my album went platinum, I made 16 million dollars. Like, what if I put out one of these shit a week? <laughs> how much money would I make? Went into the office. Telling the executives what he's going to do. The executives are telling him he can't do it. Master P said, I had to remember. I'm 80%. Uh, y'all 20%. Y'all do what I tell y'all to do. So he said, he looked around the room and said, y'all think because y'all white, y'all right. He said, I'm putting out an album a week. Do your job. And that's what he did. That's how No Limit became No Limit. He put out a new album. He put out a new. He put out an album every week for a year. And I remember that. Hold I was, on, hold we on. was in an album, an album, but it was, but it was different artists. It wasn't just Master P. Yeah. So oh. he had different artists putting out albums every week. So a Silk to Shaka album, Mystical, Mia X, C Murder, Mac, Fiend. Like he had a different artist coming out every freaking week. And I remember that because the only reason you would go in there and buy that albums is because of that tape. That tank was so strong at the time in the South. If the album had a fucking tank on it, no limit, you was picking it up to see what was on that motherfucker. So he had 52 different artists. I don't know how many he dropped that year, but it's close. He had a lot of artists, bro. Because every time you would open up a No Limit album, inside the album cover would just be all the coming soons. Oh, that's dope. And it... Mm. Damn, you don't remember that? Oh, Taylor, you I don't remember Shit. that. I was like, yeah, I don't. I I'm just learning about Master P. Like, I knew have you ever a, bought a CD, Taylor? Fuck from the you. store? Yes, I have bought a CD. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm sad. I don't, it, it, how how old young you? do you think I am? Yes, I brought CD. How, how, old, how old are you? I'm not doing this with you right now. I just Continue don't know how old you are. Continue <laughs> the conversation. Curious. I was I'm just going to say that. Um, I always knew that Master P was a businessman, but I didn't know like. 
the story behind it. I mean, that's brilliant. I love people betting on themselves. That's the best. And that's why you should watch the doc. That's why the story is so. I just loved his dance. Remember he would do that shit. He go, bruh. Master P had an amazing life that people don't talk about. Man, Master P fucking made (laughs) twin. He made. I don't know what the hell that is you doing. (laughs) That's to make him say nah. Make him say (laughs) nah. Make him Master say, P. nah, don't do that again. <laughs> don't do that again. <laughs> Master P was on two NBA preseason teams, bro. I remember that. He had a sneaker. Wait. Remember that ugly ass sneaker he had? He did. He did, but he don't stop. And that's what he was on Breakfast Club this morning. That's what he was talking about. He was like, man, what you need is product. Product is what separates you from everybody else. Mm. That's what you want. You want to sell product. And he's right. Everybody that's filthy fucking rich sells product, bro. What do you think his competitive advantage is? Being from the South? But outside of that, like, when you say no, there's a lot of people going. that are from the South, right? What mm-hmm. is it that he is exceptional at? Like, some people succeed because they're amazing organizers. Some people succeed because they're visionaries, they're innovators. What is Master P? You've spoken to him, you've known him for a while. What do you think he is so much better than his competition at outside of rap, um, let's say? Vision, uh, faith, faith in faith in God and faith in himself and um, business acumen, you know, just just being able to sit down and soak up information. Like sometimes, man, we He's have not emotional uh, either. We, 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 what'd you say, Taylor? He's not emotional. Like he was saying that he don't let um, his emotions kind of get involved in the business. Mm. If he don't. Um, he's not gonna like what he said to Snoop Dogg, like don't mess with Oh um, yeah, don't do the fuck that bro shit. And yeah. Then yeah. Don't talk bad about him either though, because mm. it's still Because he helped you. Yeah. He put you on, which is true. You know what I'm saying? Like even though but that, that goes back to, you know, people do something good for you, but it doesn't mean they're good for you. And I get it, you know what I mean? I'm I'm like I'm like that with, with people that I've that I've dealt with, you know, until they you know like when, like Wendy, I wouldn't I don't think I could ever speak bad about Wendy Wayne. Because she's done so much for you. Yeah. Even though she might have done things that are bad to you as well. Yeah. And I mean, and, you know, even, even, even with her husband, her husband only, you, know, you push me to that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're so busy out here trying to take my head off. But even still with that, I'm not going to go out of my way to, to, to speak ill of you or go out of my way to, 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 to wish harm upon you. God bless you. Do your thing. Right. You know? So... Um, I think with P, I think it's the fact that he has faith in a higher power, faith in himself, a high business acumen, and he's a he's a he's a visionary. Like you got to be able to see things, like for real, when nobody else can see him. Right. Like I can't explain to you why the the tank should be my logo. Nah. I can. I can be like, yo, I, most of my family was in the military, which P's family was, and we grew up off that military discipline. That's why I want to use this tank. Right? But you may not see the vision. Like a tank. Yeah. Hey, I don't, I don't fuck with the government. Yeah. I don't, yeah. don't fuck with America. It ain't about that. It's about the discipline that the army instills in you. It's about what that tank represents. That tank represents discipline. It represents having a foundation. It represents structure. It represents organization. That's what we're building here. Right? Mm-hmm. I can't explain that to you. I just got to show you. And um, I think that's what Master P did. I think even when he said he, he upped and went to Richland, California. I think that's where his, his, his wife's family was from or something like that. I, I, I could be getting the story wrong. I don't remember how he ended up in California, but just knowing if certain places you need to be and listening to that inner voice, as crazy as it sounds, because by the way, nobody talks to you crazier than you talk to yourself. Mm. Salute, I, it's a woman, man. Her name is Neek. Salute to Neek. Neek, uh was the music director at Hot 103.9 at Columbia, South Carolina. I've told this story a million times, wrote about it in my book. Neek, me and her were sitting in the studio having a conversation one day, you know, just talking about what's next for us as far as radio and things are concerned. And she was just telling me about signs. And, you know, mm. She was like, yo, you might, you might leave here right now. And, and, and the first license plate you see, that's, that's, right, that's where you may need to be. Mm. Right? I'm like, you know, I take it in. Get in the car. Jump in my little Honda goddamn Civic. Right. And I'm driving. And I had forgot about it. And then I thought about what she said. So I just looked to the left. Saw a lights plate. Lights plate said New Jersey. I'm like, oh, shit, New Jersey. But I'm like, ain't no fucking radio stations in New Jersey. And then my mind goes, New York, New Jersey and New York right by each other. Immediately, I dismissed the idea. I was like, nah, that'll never happen. I'm in market number 98. 
how the fuck I'm gonna make it to market number one. It don't matter how the fuck you're gonna get there. Do you see the vision? Do you see what I'm trying to show you? Whoever that is, God, the universe, whatever you are. Do you see what I'm showing you? I ain't ask you to worry about how you're going to get there. I'm trying to get you to see the vision, trying to get you to see your fucking future. I will handle the rest. I just need you to go put in the work. Sometimes we talk ourselves out of things, man. Yeah. Straight up. I get think, that vision yeah. and you talk yourself out of it. Like, nah, I ain't going. How the fuck? I'm not going there. I'll shut up whoever's talking to me in my head. There's probably people listening right now. It's like, yo, why don't I get these little signs? Why don't I get these little visions? I, I don't know if. Because you a fuck nigga. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just going, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I believe in you. Whoever you are. <laughs> I feel like his, his head yeah, he really leaned into it. that one. He really leaned into that. He. Charlemagne really leaned into that. Not Andrew. Hey, that that like, around 43, 2016, Andrew Charlemagne. Yelled out. Charlemagne <laughs> said, said that. Charlemagne the God, while I listened. While he I listened to that word. To, uh, I was, was subject to that. Else. I don't know who he was yelling yeah, at, was like, but <laughs> that person felt it. If he's listening to it, that person knew exactly who he was talking about. Because I felt it a little bit. I felt it about... <laughs> I felt about three out of ten. I, you I'll felt be honest it, with you. I you felt, felt it you, you felt it till I got to the end. <laughs> I, yeah, like, I don't know if this applies to me. I'll be honest with you. I felt the whole thing, bro. I felt it all the way through. I felt it all the That's way right. through. That's right. That's right. That's that African DNA in you. <laughs> African. <laughs> That's that black magic, bro. Oh. So, in all seriousness, though. I think sometimes there's people who like, well, why don't I see these signs? I see that kind of stuff. I don't know if things present themselves as signs as much as people who believe in themselves see signs in everything. Mm. And I think when you believe mm. in your ability to do certain things, when like you believe that. in your ability to like achieve your dreams, you mm. see a license plate and you see more than New Jersey. You see New Jersey, which is the place next to New York, which is where you should do radio. And if that was a sign, that's a convoluted ass sign. You know what I mean? If God's like, y'all want you to be in New York, so check out this fucking Patterson, New Jersey license plate. No, I'm gonna tell you why it's not a, a mix up. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why it's not a convoluted sign, right. though. Because you know, you're a joke writer, mm -hmm. right? You and your team could be sitting around writing, and then one thing, right? Triggers the next for sure. Triggers something else. For you sure. know, takes you in a whole nother direction. You're like, oh shit. And next thing you know, you don't put the whole thing together. But that's Absolutely. what it was. You see that sign. It says Jersey. Next thing you think, Jersey, there ain't no radio stations in New Jersey. Or well, New York is right there in New York. Oh, right. they never, so, so boom, the puzzles, the whole puzzle started but to I come think, together. I think what happens is when you believe in yourself, you start to see those puzzles. You start to see the pieces. It's no different than like when you get a new car, all of a sudden you start to see everybody else who got that car. Yeah. And before yeah, you got yeah, the car, yeah. you don't ever see the Acura, right? Yeah. And once you have an Acura, you see Acuras everywhere. Like... If you're a girl, right? You buy a new skirt, and then all of a sudden you see every single chick on Instagram got that skirt, or you're walking down the street. That's you see, you see more people <laughs> with the thing that you yes. have, you're, and you're like, "Oh my god, why are like you wearing Taylor. the same fucking thing?" Taylor I'm got the African earrings because she saw Taylor Rooks with the African chain um, in the Breakfast Club. Is that true? First of all, fighter. I've been had this. Don't even try it. Never seen him. <laughs> point is, never seen you. Point is, is like I've because I've been trying to understand like why is it that. I guess, and I'm saying maybe maybe Master P looks at things like this. You probably look at things like this. I look at things like this, and it's like every situation is an opportunity if you see it in that way. You know, like I think a lot of people. What happened with the pandemic is, you know, they're like, "Oh my God, we can't go to comedy clubs or we can't go into the radio. We can't do anything. We got to shut everything down." And I know a lot of like my colleagues. They just moved into their parents' place. They went back home. They're chilling. They're doing nothing, waiting for shit to come back. And all of us at the studio were like, "Oh, it's go time." It's go time. We got an opportunity. This is an opportunity. This is not the opportunity to sit back, relax, and do nothing. This is an opportunity to go hard when everybody else might just be relaxing. So maybe, yeah, maybe believing in yourself um, gives you vision, and maybe not believing in yourself blinds you. Oh, hundred percent. You know what yeah, I'm that shit could be right in front of you, and you yep. will not see it because you don't believe in yourself to be able to. You got your head down. You're moping. You're not paying attention. That's why Tupac said, "Keep your fucking head up." Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. Keep your goddamn head to the sky, like for real. Like I um, I uh, yeah, it's hard to explain vision, bro, and I can't do it anymore. And the reason I can't do it anymore is because I'm the type of person that likes to 
I'll say something. I'll be like, yo, this is going to happen. Yeah. Or, 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 or that person is next. The only reason you might remotely catch me explaining it because we got a fucking podcast and we got to fill an hour and a half. <laughs> Other than that, I wouldn't, try, I wouldn't care to explain shit to y'all motherfuckers. I'd yeah. just rather show you. I'd rather say it. And then see it happen. And then when it happens, it happens. Yeah. You know, yeah, because yeah. what happens when you have belief in yourself, your vision opens up so much that, bro, you really do start seeing what what could happen for everybody else. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Like that's why, that's why the person, people think that the uh the, the, the person that has success is the person that people go to. It's like, no, the person that people go to is the person that can see things that you can't see. Yeah. You know how many people around me see things in me that I haven't seen in myself that mm. have gotten me on the path that I'm currently on? Right. And that shit don't be having nothing to do with radio, don't have nothing to do with TV. Yeah. And, and, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are people that have definitely seen those things and be like, damn, could I do that? Right. Like, like hmm. you have to be that kind of person. Can you see something in somebody that they can't see in themselves? Can you see something someone is doing and be like, yo, you know what that person really should be? Yeah. They should be doing that. Right. And guess what? The person that you're talking about has to believe in themselves or they're not going to believe you. Yeah. That's what they have to believe that their <laughs> ideas are good. They have to believe their ideas can be successful. I remember uh, something that Duval said to me once, and it's something I always remember. It's uh, if you can't change the situation, change your perspective. And that is what I take into everything that could ever happen in my life. If I cannot right. change the situation, change the perspective. I cannot do stand-up comedy right now. I could just fucking be angry and bitch about it all day and whine on Instagram about how much I miss being on stage. Or I could find another way to tell jokes. Or I could find another outlet. Reach even Andrew, more people. You've reached more people Facts. in the past four months than you have in your whole career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like it's not even close but I wouldn't even be right? here if I didn't have that idea right I, and I think that I gravitate towards because that's something I have in me already but he articulated it so well so now when I see this thing happen when I see stages shut down or even anything it could be anything with podcasts it doesn't matter what it is my mentality is not to go oh how fucked are we my mentality to go is how can I take advantage of this let's talk about it right yeah I like, I like celebrating my people let's talk about it because Andrew did something that for years I never understood why comedians didn't do. Mm. Because I always, and, and, and you know, comedians tried to explain it to me over the years. And I just always thought that was whack. The first person I saw do it was Kevin Hart, right? right? And what that is, come out with new material all the fucking time. Right. I, I used to hear comedians say, oh, well, you know, I, I took me years to do this hour set, whatever, whatever, yada, 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 this and that. And I'm like, Rappers write raps all the time. Right. Authors write books all the time. Like all of this shit that's happening in the world every day. I listen to comedians. I, 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 y'all funny all the time. Right. Why can't you go out there and give some of this shit out all the time? Andrew, you did that. You said, fuck it. I'm going to start giving some of this material away. First, it was cutting up your stand up specials. Then yeah. it was, man, let me sit down and break down some of this shit that's happening during the week and just throwing it out there. Yeah. You know how many comedians are scared to death to do that shit, bro? Man, they should be. It's a lot of work. <laughs> oh? It's a lot of work, bro. What's, e what's easy? <laughs> Tell me what's easy. Nothing, what's nothing good is easy. I, okay. will, I will be honest. Nothing good is easy. But, uh, but no, nah, it, is, it is a lot of work, bro. But yeah, just It's a lot of work, clips. but it's effortless for you. Thank you, man. It's a lot of work, but it's effortless for you. Deepak Chopra talks about the law of least effort. Mm -hmm. the, the most effortless thing for Andrew Schultz to do is make a joke. I appreciate that. Man. That's just the truth. Yeah. <laughs> that's, your, that's your thing. Like I guess that. So, so even though it is a lot of work to sit down and do, mm -hmm. the easiest thing for you to do is make a joke. Yeah, we I actually try that. to get you to stop making jokes That's about true. every fucking thing <laughs> all yeah, the that, goddamn that, time. That, if you take that, something that, serious <laughs> just fucking once, Andrew Schultz. Please. I got to shout right? out. I got to shout out my guys, man, uh, who do the to do the monologue with me, Alex Media and Mark and Robbie and Miles, you know, just for putting in the work every single week because that shit is a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of angry girlfriends. So, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, there's a lot of angry second. girlfriends over hey. here, bro. We got pissed hey. off wifeys. Hey, don't think for <laughs> one second I'm not offering y'all some goddamn money to come in my writer's room. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we know we got you. We know we got you, bro. Because motherfuckers talk about diversity in the in the writers' room. We got right? some white boys in that I room. Gotta, I got that. I need some wild ass white boys. Right? <laughs> I need I need some wild ass white boys that are in here challenging. I'm still. I'm not even joking when I say this, bro. I need I need enough of everything, and I want this to be a lesson for everybody. You need enough of everything to keep you centered. Yo, can I explain some shit to you, bro? And I mean this sincerely, and this is why, and I, I'm not saying this as like some like liberal talking point. I promise I am not. I'm mm -hmm. telling you this as someone who is has experience writing these monologues every single week. When you have a diverse group of opinions, you have a better product. The yes. fact that these writers' rooms for these shows could only be one group of people explains to me why they always have one opinion. Yes. The reason why our shows or these monologues that we're doing is so good, and they're the best. I believe they're the best monologue in the world right now, hands down. The reason why is because we go through person after person, different types of people, different experience. We're on the phone. We're doing more research than we are writing jokes so that we can get to the truth of the point of the point. How all these late night shows are just a bunch of white dudes, how they do, I, I, it's like how SNL is just a bunch of white dudes. Well, now they've diversified SNL more, but like, it's mind boggling to me. Why you wouldn't want to have different opinions because it makes the joke better. It makes it more nuanced. It makes it more specific. Do you Yo, know what I'm saying? In order for everybody, first of all, I like moderate. I like center. Because mm -hmm. I don't think that there's one thing that's, too much this way, this much to the right. I don't, I don't want to just be to the left. Hmm. I want to take it back now, y'all. You know what I'm hmm. saying? I want to do one hop this time, right foot, left yeah. stomp, left foot, left stomp, cha-cha real smooth. That's all I want to do. I want to cha-cha real goddamn smooth. And the only way you can cha-cha real smooth is if you go to the left a little bit, go to the right. Mm -hmm. All right, take it back now, y'all. And then you come back. To the cha-cha. That's all I want to do. I want to cha-cha real smooth. And I promise you the world would be a better place if everybody knew how to goddamn cha-cha slide. Yo, you know why? It's because when, at least when, I believe, when we were younger, the left and the right were like this far apart, right? So the space in between was small. So it was easy to be left. And it was easy to be right because they weren't mm -hmm. that far apart. Now the left is here and the right is here. You know right? why? So, so the space is huge in the it's middle. Huge. So the majority of people are in the middle. So when we make these pieces, we're speaking to the middle, which is the most reasonable way which of is thinking. The most, it's, it's, it's the people that just use a little bit of logic. That's it. Speaking of logic, we're going to get to him soon. But it's just a little <laughs> bit of logic, a little bit of object objectivity. Yeah. Like some, people who some aren't trying to... Some compassion, some empathy. Hey, for people who aren't trying to be right, mm. they just want to know what, 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 what the truth is That's to a it. certain extent. And I'm not even saying that Everything I say is the truth. Everything you say is the truth. All I'm simply saying is that when you have everybody fighting over power, you never really get to the point. Because mm. everybody's just fighting over power. Because it's not about left the point. To, it's about the left power. Wants the po it's about the power. It's not about the mm -hmm. point. It's not about actually getting to a level of understanding. Mm -hmm. It's simply about, no, I want power. My side is right. We need the power. We need it's, it's a tug of war. Everybody's tugging, 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 tugging when the actual point to the matter is in the middle. And you know who suffers when it comes to government when that happens? The consumer. The fucking people. The average That's person. It. The yeah. average fucking because person. Because if you look at like our political views, like if you look at the politicians that represent us right now, they're they're catering to the extremes. You got Trump, regardless of how you feel about Trump, he caters to the extreme. And Absolutely. Biden, I don't know who the fuck he caters to. I know a lot of people cater into him. <laughs> <laughs> if this guy is even still alive. But you have like a Bernie Sanders who's even, who's possibly, you know, close to becoming president is, represents one extreme of the political system. Where's this center? Who's the you guy or girl in the middle who's just fucking reasonable? They're not there because everybody in that's the center is afraid it. of talking because if they that's say the it. wrong thing, they get consumed by their party. Chris, Chris, you was talking about this last night. You had a good point to this. Add, add, Chris, jump in. I mean, wouldn't you argue that Obama was essentially a centrist, but he was. was seen as radical because of he his was. race? I think Obama was, if anything, was. a little right of center. 
He was. I agree. Obama was absolutely a centrist, and, but, but, and, 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 they, and they radicalized him because of his skin color. Of course, but when you also look at Obama, you look at the people that came out to vote for him, and you see a lot of people cross the aisle. Yes. You saw a lot of people, and they crossed the aisle because they felt that they were represented by him. He's reasonable. He was He's logical. Re- same with he Clinton. He was objective. Clinton did the exact same thing. You saw a lot of people cross the aisle for Clinton back in the day. I don't right? remember Clinton. I wasn't. I mean, I was. I was old enough, but I wasn't giving a fuck. Back. Well, Bill Clinton ousted Bush. I mean, it's hard to win the presidency when you have an incumbent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so it's like who was I, th- I believe fresh off a of war? Didn't Bush go to war? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Biden is essentially a centrist, if we're being honest. Yeah, you're right about that. He is, but you just don't know anything about Biden's policies. You're just not Biden's sure what the fuck leans going very on conservative to me. But I guess, I guess he's a centrist. I mean, Obama, and, and it's funny because I was just having this conversation with somebody this weekend. If if those people who listen to Fox News actually didn't listen to Fox News, but actually listened to mm-hmm. President Barack Obama, they'd be like, I like this guy. This guy, like he's he he he's he's more in tune with us than than yeah. we might be we might be thinking. Just because he goes he's black. to war, he kills tons of Muslims. Bro, he didn't believe in gay he marriage till the second term. Didn't believe in gay marriage. <laughs> like, he's what are we talking hard about? as fuck on immigration. If you just said those things, Republicans might be like, "Yo, this is the dude." But he's willing to listen to everybody. Now, here's the thing about that: being a president that's more centrist does not get you remembered in history. It gets you really? appreciated, in my opinion, it gets you appreciated in the moment, but in history, you end up letting down both parties, so they kind of look back and you go, oh, well, he didn't do enough for us, and then the other party's like, oh, he didn't do enough for us, whereas a guy like Reagan, who Democrats look at and they go, oh, fuck, man, this guy completely screwed us over, look what he did to black neighborhoods and putting drugs in the communities, etc. And then you have Republicans look at Reagan and go, he was the he was the consummate conservative professional. He was a true president. I'm a Reagan conservative, etc. So for longevity, maybe it's better to pander to your party. But for now, mm. to take care of your people now and to make the people happy now during your presidency, maybe it's better to be centrist. Mm. You think that's mm. off, Chris? No, I mean, I think the problem is when there are centrists, we still treat them as radicals is the problem. And I I think Obama is the perfect example of that. Like Obama, I have, you know, he's not left enough for me, but to the right, he was a radical. He was a communist. He was an agent. He was born overseas. So it's like, I think, you know, ultimately I'll take a centrist right now. My preference would be to go way left of that. I'd take a centrist in a heartbeat right now because I think we have to center the ship. Yo, yeah, here, I just, I just want question. somebody that listens to everyone. Charlotte, here's a question. Mm-hmm. How much should we sacrifice in our presidential in our presidential selection? Like, I understand we should mean? be selfish in who we choose to be president of the United States. Mm-hmm. But should we also be selfless? So should we also go, OK, I don't really care about this thing or I or this thing does this issue doesn't matter to me, but I understand it really matters to these people and I can support this guy who's looking after them. How much well, can I mean, we, do we sacrifice in our decision is what I'm trying to say. Well, it depends on what position uh, uh, you're in in life. Like I've, I've always said, you know, vote my interest. I'm going to vote my interest and my interest happen to be, you know, black people. I'm just, I'm just honest about that. You yeah. know, and, and, and I care about. You know, the, the, the economic equality uh, of, 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 of black people. But if there's something that um, can benefit other oppressed and marginalized groups, just anything to help people. Like, it don't even matter. Like, if, if something is going to help and I see that there's somebody who can get in position and a- implement some policies that's going to help people. Yeah, hey, I'm all for that. Yeah, I, I, wonder if, I wonder if that like hmm. if, if, if Trump had a. If Trump had a universal health care plan, yeah, or universal basic income that I know immediately would impact this country, right, and and help people, I would be like, yeah, what rock if, with that. What if we like educated? I don't know if I'd vote for him. I don't want to tell. I don't want to tell people how to vote, but like, what if we educated people on the expectation of voting? You know, like one thing I'm always trying to manage in my relationship is expectation. You know, like if I tell my girl I'm going to be available all week and then I'm not, she's going to feel way worse than if I tell her I'm not available all week. And then all of a sudden I become available a little bit. Right. Mm Because the expectation I set. So if we tell people, hey, your president 
has to agree with every single thing that you want, and then they're a good president, the people will always be let that's down. True. Maybe yeah, if, that's, I mean, that's bullshit. But, even you, know, now, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe we yeah. should tell people, like, yo, have the things you really value and choose the president that's going to touch on those things, but understand he's not going to be perfect or she's not going to be perfect. There's going to be some things that y'all disagree on, and that's okay because there's 300 fucking million people in this country. But yeah, I mean, they do it all the time when they vote these bills. Whenever you talk to somebody about who voted for the 94 crime bill, if you ask Bernie Sanders, you voted for the 94 crime bill, disproportionately impacted black and brown people. Uh, you say to Joe Biden, you wrote the 94 crime bill. The first thing they'll say to you is there was so much other things in the bill. Mm. There was violence against women acts and there was this and there was that. So they were willing to make the sacrifice in regards to black and brown people being disproportionately impacted by this bill in order to lift all those other things up. Mm. So yeah, they do it all the time. So why shouldn't voters? <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? They, they're willing to make those sacrifices and vote for things that they specifically want. So why shouldn't voters? Fuck yeah, I'm with that. I wonder if we'd be happier if we looked at it like that. I, I really wonder if we just go, all right, listen, what I care about is these two things. Like I know there's a lot of people out there that are like single issue voters. They, they, they believe that abortion should be illegal and whatever candidate is saying that they're going to get rid of abortion, they're voting for them. They don't give a fuck about anything else on the platform. And I don't think that that's, I don't know if that's necessarily smart for like the greater good of America, but I wonder if their expectations of their candidate are far less and therefore they're much happier as long as they try to get that single thing that they're interested in across. I, I got two things I want right now. What's that? I want I want an economic equity package for black people. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, whether you want to call it reparations, whatever, whatever you choose to call it, I want to see this country atone for its original sin, which is slavery. Yo, imagine really start Biden wrote the crime bill and the reparation bill. What's wrong with that? That'd be, that. that'd be hilarious in terms of like evolution. Well, he could the write way, the bill as president, but he would actually be the one signs it into law. That would way, be a wild, that'd be some wild growth. He should if he gives a fuck about what happens to him after he dies. Yo, think about this. If he ended up doing that, we got to get rid of cancel culture because it shows how redemption. much people can grow and it shows redemption within your lifetime. If, if I'm Joe Biden and I, and I, and I've been saying this, if I give a fuck about my legacy, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be making policy commitments to these people in these communities that I harmed. And when I get into the white house, I'm going to be, if, if Barack Obama was, was John F. Kennedy, I'm going to be Lyndon B. Johnson. Mm. Lyndon B. Johnson was probably the most progressive Democrat. Racist. He's the most progressive racist of all time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, 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 but can you deny, can you deny the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Yeah. Can you deny the Voting Rights Act? Can you de deny putting Thurgood Marshall on the Supreme Court? Like, and matter of fact, he did three Civil Rights Act. It was a three, it was the Civil Rights Act of um 64. And then he did the Civil Rights Act of 68, which was like the housing, the housing, the housing rights act or some shit like that. I'm, I, I'm Yo, not I'm have not a racist, scholar, but look it up. Have racists created the most progressive policies? Probably because they probably came to their fucking senses. Yo, you think they're sitting there? They're just like, <laughs> we fucked up, bro. <laughs> this shit bro, was hard. <laughs> 48 laws of power. Never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies. Mm. When you hire a former enemy, a former enemy will go harder for you because he's got more to fucking prove. And you never know. These people get older. And they realize, like, yo, we fucked up a lot of people, bro. Yo, that's we interesting. Up a lot of families. A lot of people are dead because of us. Let me get my fucking soul right and do what I need to do. That's interesting because, like, somebody who doesn't, someone who isn't racist doesn't feel the same need to atone for a sin because they didn't call, they didn't commit the sin. Does that make, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, like, I don't feel any responsibility of racist because I'm not racist. But... I, I, I understand what you're saying, but think about it from this perspective as well. If you're a white person and you have empathy- Watch, it. And watch you, this, you, watch it. this. This is what I was okay. trying to say. If I came from a racist ass family, right? And like my, my parents and shit were racist and I grew up in this racist environment and I was the first person to not be racist, I think I'd go above and beyond because I knew what I was fighting against. Absolutely. But I Absolutely. came from this like progressive loving family. So when I see racist, I'm like, oh, that's just, that's just a couple people. Like, white I don't people. realize that that's a lot of people. That's what all white people should do, especially if you're hang a white out with male. some racists. 
No, so they realize they male, exist. Yeah. If you're a white male, that maybe you need you do need to hang out with some racists, change their fucking minds. But if you're a white male who has a privilege, if you're if you're in a privileged position, I mean you're in a privileged position and you have that privilege and you have that power, treat every other oppressed and marginalized group like you do when you get on a plane and you see somebody struggling with their back. Let them put it up because it's Corona and we're not doing that. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't putting your bag up full of Corona. Every man, you're a piece of shit. Every man, when I see certain people get on the plane, I help. Yo, you need help with your bag? Whether it's an older woman, an older man. What if it's a a lesbian? What if it's a lesbian and it's like... The tough lesbian. It's the butch. I got to look at the biceps, right. baby. If it, w- are you going to help the butch? Like. Are you going to emasculate the lesbian in front of her? I got to see lesbian? what the biceps look like. What the biceps look like? I'm looking at the buys and the tries. Okay, what if the <laughs> buys and the tries? What if the buys and the tries are not it? But she got a shave side of her head. I, I'm always helping. I'm, I, 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 by the way, when I get on a plane. And I see somebody in front of me. Mm-hmm. It's two reasons I'm always helping. Right. I got three kids. Can I get the get, get me yeah, up? Yeah, the fuck yeah, on. You know what I mean? That's number one. All right. Yeah, yeah. Number two is just common courtesy. Right. And and by the way, some people get offended by that. I don't need your help. All right. I didn't, I didn't say you need it. I just offered. I wait to okay. see them struggle a little. Like, yeah, but by then it's too late. Girls will let you know if they want if like they want you to help, because they'll like go for the bag and they'll be like, uh. They'll well, like, no, the new, they'll the, like the make new, sounds and shit. I, I, I've only rode on a plane like twice this year, but the new shit I've seen is they'll they'll they'll, they'll have their bag, yeah. And they'll put their hand on the hips and they go, huh. yeah. They'll look around, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They start grunting, <laughs> making noises and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anybody and help? Yeah, yeah. And it's not and it's not just women. Yeah. I do it with older guys. It's just anybody that I feel could possibly use my assistance. I can't do it to a dude, bro. I, I can't. I can't disrespect Even an older dude, guy? Nah, old man? nah, nah, no. Nope. Why the disrespect him? I'll let an old man leave his oxygen tank up there. I'm not taking that shit <laughs> no. down, bro. I would never Whoa. disrespect a man by taking Whoa. his shit down, Why bro. Why Whoa, bro. That's a man, bro. You can't get another man's Whoa. luggage out the thing. I once saw an old man get dragged by his luggage around the luggage conveyor belt thing. Because he was trying to, he was trying to get his bag, and his bag got him more than he got the bag. He just fell on the bag, and I was like, "He don't figure it out. That's a man. Men figure out problems like this. It's not my responsibility. That's not my responsibility, hey, bro." Did he look like he was Superman in that hole? Watch me. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> what the fuck, man? Listen. The moral of the story is: I think that whenever you have privilege, whenever you have power, whether you're a white man, black man, whatever it is, if you can help somebody else do it so to your point even if you aren't racist mm. you see what the fuck's going on in america mm. if you see how you can help help and that goes back to my whole original point that i was talking about how we enjoy watching car crashes yeah when the simplest concept andrew literally the simplest concept is to help not hurt it's just that simple help not hurt that's it how are you helping every day? Bro, you know what's crazy? We can't even help without videotaping it now. Yeah. Oh, like, I hate them type of people. You know what I, I really you. do not like, man? This shit have pissed me I off. You. you ever see those you ever see those videos where like the kid gets the poor kid in school a bag of clothes? Yeah. I hate it. And like he got to do a whole video outing the poor kid as poor to the whole world. I hate you. And then House of Highlights repost it, ESPN repost it, and the whole world knows how fucking broke this one kid is now. It's like, why can't you just give him a bag of clothes and not say shit, and then everybody looks like the kid came up? Remember that fuck nigga I randomly screamed out early in bro, the podcast? Bro, That's what, that was Again, for this moment. You gotta Bring warn me back. before one of them come Bring out, Bring that bro. back. Bring that back. In fact, I'm not even gonna say that. I'm gonna say fuck boy. I All hate right. people who do that. I really do, yo. I can't stand that. And how listen, many pats on the it. back you need? <laughs> And I, I get like, you know, some people say, oh, well, there's so much negative out there. Sometimes, you know, you want to broadcast the positive to show people, you know, it would be more G. It's someone else. It's more G when it's more G when people yeah. talk about that's what it. You did. Let the rumor that's let it. the rumor go, bro. That's it. I don't got to I don't got to do it. Like, yo, the, like th- that one time I gave uh, a quarter million dollars to South Carolina State University uh, when I opened up the scholarship in my mom's name. The only reason I went on the field with that big ass check is because they explained to me how this helps other people donate to the school. 
Yeah, you set an and, example, yeah. And it was and it was literally like five other people before me and like one other person after me, uh OG Jim Clyburn, who when I tried to tell him, nah, you know, you the OG, you go first. He goes, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Go, go up there with your two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. I'm like, all right, damn, OG. All right, go up there with my check, show the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. OG Jim Clyburn comes after me. One point three million dollars. <laughs> I'm like, all right, stunting is my hobby. Balling is my hobby. I see you, OG. I wasn't mad at it. Right. But the reason they were doing that and they put on that big show is just to encourage other people to donate. Right. I don't necessarily believe those videos. Maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe it does encourage people to help when, when people record themselves. I don't know. I'm just saying I, I don't personally like it, but I ain't knocking nobody for it. Do your thing. Yeah, I, I agree. It's like maybe it gets more poor kids clothes and in the long run, that's good because I'm not getting them the clothes. But at the same time, I look at it, it's like it's kind of exploitive, bro. It is. It, it, I don't like well, seeing people profit off other people's pain. Unless it's jokes. I really don't. <laughs> unless, unless it's who? Unless it's jokes because them shits are funny, bro. It depends. It depends. <laughs> but also, I feel like if people some just to play... um. What do you say, devil's advocate, whatever? Yeah. Um, regular Lobis devil's advocate. Philly. Regular, regular devil's, devil's, devil's advocate. Philly. To play Philly Sixer. <laughs> Not white um, devil's advocate. I was going to say, um, maybe this makes other people aware of what's going on, too, though. You're like, right. You know what I mean? Your, like, people your not fame gonna... brings awareness, and that helps more in the long run. Yeah. And sometimes you got to do some you know, shit. I'll be honest, though. If I ever give a quarter million dollars to anybody, the world is going to know about it. I <laughs> promise you that much. I'm going to carry that check with me <laughs> for a week. I'm going to carry like a surfboard. Wherever the fuck I go, that check is coming with me. My daddy with took it. me. I, 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 my, my daddy took it because I was home in South Carolina mm -hmm. and I had it in my mom's house. And my daddy said, I ain't never seen no shit like this in my life. Knowing him, he probably tried to cash that motherfucker. He motherfucker. Of course he did. I would have. <laughs> if I found that shit, I'd walk right into Chase Bank like, yo. Yo. Yo, you got this? Especially down <laughs> south. You'd be like, yo, look here. Look here. This how big, big money comes on big checks. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Big money coming in. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I take that back. I don't knock nobody. If you want to, if you want to videotape your good deeds, do your fucking thing. Because if it yeah, encourages so other people nah, to do nah, it, nah, some's nah. extra, some's extra. I, like listen, when, uh, it is when Adrian Bronner be doing that shit. I'm not here for it. What? You know what? I'm gonna tell you what I don't like. I don't like when they do it to homeless people. Yeah. Because yeah. homeless people are already in a fucked up condition, bro. Like, don't do that to them, man. Like, how you know that this person wants to be seen on camera in this way? I mean, you know they're, I mean, they're on the street. Don't do that. <laughs> they're on the street, bro. Yo, don't, don't, they already probably don't have, and I don't want to say they don't have no dignity because I don't know these people. These people might be the most happiest people in the world. Mm -hmm. They might have their head held high. I'm just saying I wouldn't do that to them. I'm not going to put their condition out That's there. That's the like, same thing guys? with the poor kid at school, though. It's like, he don't want you to videotape it. Like, now when he wears any, all that shit the next day, like everybody's make, oh yeah, that's the clothes that John gave you. Let him just be fly. Do you By think the way, I wouldn't donate nothing to you poor kids at school because you look at Instagram, ain't none of y'all motherfuckers poor. Y'all kids be balling. When is the last time you seen a poor kid in a high school? You can't be poor and on Instagram. Yeah, but maybe yeah. I don't when the know. last time? Show me the last time you've a poor still, kid. I think there's oh, still poor, poor kids, pictures, bro. <laughs> I think there's still poor kids left. <laughs> no, I know that they are. But via Instagram, you cannot find them. Bro, you know what you got to do if you you're poor? Tell. You got to get a good body so you could just not wear a shirt. What do you mean? Like, if you just have ripped abs and shit, all the, every time you're on Instagram, just be shirtless. Yeah, then, but you can get ripped abs from not eating. Exactly. <laughs> So now you're not eating, you got all these ripped abs, and then you don't need to spend all this money on fucking shirts and hoodies and all that shit. Just be on the gram flexing with your shirt off. That's kind of a way of getting around poverty when you think well, about it. I would, I would do that if I had a smartphone, Andrew. Say what? I would, I would love to be on Instagram flexing, but I'm homeless. I don't even have a phone. Are we talking about kids in school? I know, I'm or are we so talking about right home? Now. I don't. The goalpost <laughs> keeps getting moved with these poor homeless right, kids. Okay, it's, it's, it's poor, I'm just calling. It's, I'm just talking about the poor kid in school. Also, keep it in they, the bubble, bro. Why don't they ever share the the video of like when they give the poor kid the backpack of clothes and the poor kid didn't know that he was bummy until he got the clothes? <laughs> like, you know, nah, the poor know, kid is know. like he opens up the bag. Me, 
<laughs> I'm, gonna lie. Yo, DS- I'm not gonna lie. Homelessness hurts the fuck out of me. That shit hurts to see somebody living on the street. Bro. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie to you, especially in America, and especially when it's a fucking veteran. Yo, you mean to tell me I went to fight for this goddamn country and I don't got shit to show for it? Yeah, like, I feel like if you went to fight for this country, if you was in any war. You should get taken care of for the rest of your life. Agreed. It really would not. It really would not cost much to take care of no veteran, bro. Amen. Make sure they got. Make sure they got room and board. Make sure they got money for yeah. food every month. Give them a stipend. Make sure that their bills are paid. Make sure they got proper health insurance. Like what the fuck, man? Yeah, you give your life. Your life should be taken care of. I think yes. one thing though, and uh, you know, you probably know about this from your work in mental health, is that um, a lot of homelessness is due to mental health. It's not you see my shirt. Ah, I see. Therapy is dope, right? But um, yeah, man, it's like a lot of these people on the streets are crazy and then, you know, their family dies or they lose their family and there's just no support system for them. And it's it's really tricky. And that's why if well, America, you America should be health, that support system. Well, that's the thing. If you, if you attack mental health, you actually save a lot of problems. Like you save, you know, you solve the homelessness problem, or at least a lot of it. You know, you solve... A lot of the uh, what's it called? You know, pris- a lot of this prison reform that you want to do. A lot of these people that keep going to jail and they keep ending up in jail are suffering from mental illness. So if Absolutely. you attack mental illness, you could solve a lot of prison stuff. You could solve a lot of homelessness. Is you well, got to get to the root of the problem, it. bro. We keep dismissing it. We keep dismissing people as fucking crazy. Um, well, they are we're, crazy. We're, 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 we're really. I mean, I don't, I don't like to use that word, I but I, you know, hey, I get, I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? Um, we're, we're we're also in an era where people don't have empathy, right? So when you yeah. don't have empathy, you don't give a fuck about what somebody else is feeling. Yeah. You're not even thinking about it. Yeah. I've been probably depressed, like, and had real bad anxiety for, like, the past since, like, June. Like, really bad. Like, ever since Jazz died, mm. and then my man Shaq and Anguilla, he, 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 he committed suicide. Mm. And then just, like, it's almost like I can't allow myself to feel good at a time like this. Like meaning, like guilty. if anything good, yeah. if anything good happens, right? Like if so, like like if some, if I know something good is about to happen in my yeah. life, I am PTSD immediately kicks in. Like, all right, so where's the uh, where's the other shoe that's about to drop? Yeah, where's that? Right. Where's that? Ha- what? Just somebody's go. Yo, I'm to the point now when people call me. If you call me back to back, I'm like, man, hold the fuck up, man. Let me see. And I'm I'm bracing myself to hear some bullshit. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So that shit keeps you in a constant state of anxiety. Keeps you in a constant state of PTSD. I have these extreme highs and extreme lows. I'm talking about extreme highs. I'm talking about waking up on a Saturday morning feeling light and good, like I'm on a fucking pill, like, yes. And then the next Saturday, I'm in the backyard, like, I don't know if I want to hug this tree or fucking hang myself from it. Which, which, which one is it? Jeez. Like, seriously, I'm, I'm serious. And you got to laugh the fucking keep from crying out this motherfucker. Yeah. But guess what? In the words of 45, it is, is what, what it is, is baby. What the fuck are we it is do? what it is. What yeah. the fuck am I going to do? I do everything. I go to ter- I go to therapy. I talk to my sacred purpose coach. I read. I, 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 I exercise. I got a beautiful wife, a beautiful family, beautiful friends, beautiful support system. Sometimes you just can't escape what the fuck you're feeling. You just can't. Yeah, don't escape That's- it. Just feel it. I think that's the biggest problem for most people is they try to escape it. Yeah, you have to, you hurt. can't run yeah. away from your feelings, man. They chase you. But you got to acknowledge it. Lean like, into them. You got to lean into it. That's what I'm like. I'm t- like, I'll be, I've been, fu- yo, since June, I've been fucked up. Bruh, if you I mean, cannot change the situation, change the perception, bro. Change the Stop perception. Stop running away from those suicides, man. See what you learn from them. What did you learn from them? What has changed? What great things and i know it sounds crazy to even say but like what great things have come to you from them what great realizations have come from them? what profound things have happened to you since then that you can use for your life it's like you could they could be a um an anchor that holds you down forever and stops you from moving or they could be the you know a set of wings man i'm i'm not all the way there yet but i will say um it is it is there was something i was already working on that when 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 jazz happened which was so wild because when jazz happened, literally the next day, I was on a, a Zoom meeting about this thing. And then my man Shaq committed suicide later on in the month. And um, I, uh, it, it, just re- it just made me, like, 
all right, yeah, I'm, I hate, I'm on the right path. This is what I have to do. It just makes me want to do more of the work Good. is what I'm saying. It, it, it makes me want to double, triple down on the work. I want to see so many black and brown people, men, women, going to therapy. I want to be able to provide people with the, the help they need, the resources they need. Like I want to see so many people just go out there and start getting to a place of healing in a real way. G Herbo just did that. Salute to G Herbo. Uh, I think it's called the, I swear, I know it's called it. Swerving Something. I can't remember what, exactly what the name of his organization is, but G Herbo just launched his, 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 his foundation. And I salute G Herbo because G Herbo is a young man. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I didn't have a handle on my emotions or my mental health when I was in my 20s. I wasn't even thinking about that shit. You know, even though I had got diagnosed with, I know I didn't get diagnosed with anxiety until I was like 31, 32. That's when the doctor told me like, yo, you suffer from anxiety. You have panic attacks, right? So I didn't even know what it was. So for somebody like G Herbal in his 20s to actually already have a handle on it and already, you know, doing the work, I, I got to salute him. Because I'm going to be honest with you. If I hadn't started doing the work four or five years ago, bruh, I don't know if I could have got past. I, I don't know if I could have got through the last three months. To be totally honest. And I've been having, I've been having that conversation, right? Like I've been thinking, you know, what gets a person to the point of suicide? I don't think because, I because, because think about it, right? Like you had to get up this morning and yeah. say, I'm coming to the studio. Yeah. To do this podcast. What, what, what gets the person to the point where they say, I'm leaving today. I don't even I'm like checking. I, I'm checking out. I don't even like I, going down that path, man. I, I don't either. I don't even right? like thinking but, but, about but, that. But, but I, I don't either, but I can't sit here and act like, you know, you don't think about it sometimes. You know, especially when you've had two friends do it. Like, you're like, what, what got them to that point? Like, I know both of these people. These are people mm -hmm. that I, like, Jazz is my girl, like, in a real way. And, you know, she got diagnosed with depression when she was 19. And, you know, we always dealt with anxiety and everything throughout the years. We help lift each other up. But what gets you to that point where you're like, Day is the day I'm out, bro. You get to a point. Same thing that happened to Tamar. Same thing. Like, I have a few friends that suffer with depression. And I know with one, like, I feel like they think it's never going to get better. But one has a child, and that's what keeps them, like, keep Ooh, going and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah, at the same time, um, I know someone else that had a child and committed suicide. And I guess they felt like they didn't deserve to even have their child almost like and I think you just have I think it just hits a point like it's just one of those you keep taking you keep taking it and then yeah and listen I don't want nobody to think Charlemagne the God is suicidal I'm not suicidal in no way shape or form what I'm trying to tell y'all is you you it's death is constantly death has been on my mind for the past yeah. two months in a real way but that's only because I know that there's so much death around us mm. you know what I'm saying like the whole year has been rooted in death bro like yeah. Kobe. And I mean, I, I can go back to Nipsey last year, but this year, Kobe, coronavirus, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, mm -hmm. Jazz, Shaq. It's like, what the fuck is going on out here in these streets? Mm -hmm. You know, pop smoke, like all this thing. Like, what the hell? You hear, you hear all of these random stories. One year old's getting killed. And this friend, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? So it's hard not to always constantly think about death and think about your own mortality and yo honestly it does it takes you it gets you in a dark place it does make you depressed it does it absolutely mm. does it makes you depressed it I makes your anxiety you be at an all-time high it makes your ptsd go crazy what'd you say taylor i had to hit you up because i was feeling like depressed like a couple months ago just seeing all these deaths just keep happening i'm and i'm person death is always sadly on my mind and especially this year mm. and it's um like what you just saying Charlie, i didn't mean to cut you off no oh, good. I mean, I'm 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 only gonna listen when people like Taylor hit me, people like Paige, people hit me and they, you know, they be in a little funk. And I, the first thing I say to them every time is like, look, please don't tell me you' about to kill yourself because I cannot handle any more goddamn <laughs> death this summer. I'm serious, but I, it sounds crazy, but I'm being honest. Like, right? Let's talk this shit the fuck out. Let's figure it out. Like, do you need me to call somebody for you? Because I'm not the person that's qualified to have that conversation. I'm the New Jersey license plate. I can get you to New York. All right. Mm -hmm. 
I could, I could, I'm just a sign. I could tell you what you might need to be doing and what you need to be doing is sitting down and talking to somebody. But I'm telling you, a lot of people have been going through it the past few months, bro. And, 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 and that's the other thing that gives me um, encouragement and uplifts me is when I'm talking to people who are way in a worse place than I am. Because mm. mine really is just coming from a place of sadness. Right. I'm sad. If I'm being, if I'm being honest, I'm sad. I'm mm-hmm. sad. Right. I'm sad. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sad. Right. So I go through these moments where I can be happy and joyous and laughing and with my people and then start thinking about the bullshit. Yeah. It's like, God damn it. And I say it to myself, I'd be like, fuck jazz really did. Like shit, fuck Shaq really did. And then I still find myself reaching for my phone, mm. text jazz and shit. Like, it's like, that shit is crazy. Yo. That shit is really, uh, yeah. That shit can really take you in a bad place, man. Yeah. We ain't got yeah. no bills to pay. Yes, we did. I was going to say, yeah, Please, I want to take fuck this. Out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let's, hey, by the way, uh, this is not an ad, even though we are about to uh, pay some bills. <clears throat> Chris had a good point, so, and, and Taylor had a good point, so we're just adding this in, man. Uh, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Um, reach out and touch 1-800-273-8255. They're available 24 hours a day. You know, they got English and Spanish, but, it, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, man, you know, they provide free and confidential support for people in distress. You know, everybody may not have a, a support group of friends or a therapist like I do. I, I literally and it's so interesting. I just went to my phone and it was Paige texting me saying, hey, your therapist is available tomorrow at three. It's actually the first time I'm going to see her in person uh, since this whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. Which should be very helpful. But yeah, 1-800-273-825. Five National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Schultz, pay some bills. All right, we're going to take a break for a second. Let me tell you something. Stop going to the grocery store and risking getting corona, risking spreading corona. You know what we're dealing with right now. It's not a game. Get those, get those groceries delivered right to your crib, okay? You could do that in a lot of different ways. I'm going to tell you the best way to make sure it's the most fresh, the best ingredients, the best tasting food, um, better help you meal prep, better help you with everything. It's HelloFresh, Okay. Uh, they have high quality ingredients every single week, super flavorful experience, flavorful experience. Over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure the freshest recipes are delivered to your door. HelloFresh saves you time. Okay. Cut out that stressful meal planning bullshit. All right. The grocery store trips, all that. All you got to do is go to HelloFresh. It will save you all the time in the world. Your food will taste better and it's delivered directly to your crib. I cannot think of a better reason why you should sign up for this. Oh, wait a minute. I can because they're going to give you money off. That's right. $80 off your first order. You go to HelloFresh.com slash Idiots80. Okay. You use the code Idiots80. You get $80 off, including free shipping on your first box. Why would you not do that? I'm telling you, HelloFresh is committed to making fresh, delicious food available now more than ever and has taken extra steps to keep its employees and customers safe. They've even donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019. This year, HelloFresh is stepping up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. I'm telling you, great company, great food, incredibly convenient, and you're getting $80 off. What more could you want? Go get that free, well, not all free, but $8 worth of free food Go get it right now. Now let's get back to the show. That's right. <clears throat> let's get back to the show. Um, things we won't give a fuck about next week. Uh, I have to. I have to address uh, Logic. Salute to Logic, the rapper. Um, Logic just put a new album out. What's this? Is that? Logic What's black? Oh, he's, uh, he's biracial. Is he? Yeah, he's biracial. Does he What's ever Logic's, talk about that? Um, yeah, yeah does, he ever, all the does, time. He, does he ever rap about that by any chance? All the time. Oh, he does? <laughs> all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. You sure he mentions it? All the time. Oh, okay. Can you pick up on my sarcasm? <laughs> oh, I got it now. <laughs> I didn't I don't really know. What's, what's the name of Logic's new album called? Um Ori. It's, his, la- oh. it's his last <laughs> album. Um he retiring. Uh I don't like to dismiss anybody's feelings. Okay. Because no pressure. I, I wouldn't, what's it called? No pressure, I think. No pressure. I don't, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anybody to dismiss mine. It's just that when I hear, um, and I'm not saying this is logic at all. I'm just telling you how I'm, I'm, I'm feeling about this situation. When I hear people say certain things when their albums come out, I don't know if that's how they really feel. 
or if they're just doing it because it garners some type of attention, some type of promotion. You know, last time uh, Logic put out an album, I don't know if it was the last time, but it was recently, and he 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 dissed me on the album. Not, it wasn't a diss, he just had some bars for me, and he said something like to the effect of, you know, he don't do Breakfast Club interviews, Charlemagne is rude. And then he brought up me saying he was homophobic, which I never actually said. What I did was I got some bad research, clearly, because somebody in the prep sheet had said that uh, Logic had said in a Vlad TV interview that he would be uncomfortable to listen to a gay rapper or something to that effect. So I did what anybody does when they're interviewing somebody. I asked him about those comments. And we can play a clip of it. You got it? You got the clip, tail? Yeah. Let me hear it. Your I, father was a crackhead, right? He was. He's doing good now. He's, he's, you know, he's now. sober now. But it's crazy. It's all about experience. That, that's why, honestly, me, because I don't, I don't smoke weed, I don't drink, which is fine. You can do whatever you do. And I think it's good in moderation. But me, you know, witnessing my mother getting her ass whooped by man as a, uh, as a, as a child. Totally wrong clip. Um, I was leading up to that. Okay. Round of applause to Taylor for totally playing the wrong clip that had nothing to do with what I was discussing just now. Okay. I mean, literally... I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, he said that I called him homophobic and I didn't call him homophobic. And I'm like, Taylor, do you have the clip of me asking him about the homophobic thing Charlamagne. on Vlad TV? If you I think, found it. If you think <laughs> you're confused. <laughs> I mean, God. You cannot was, imagine I, what the rest of us <laughs> are feeling right now. <laughs> I was going somewhere with this. Taylor just gave away the climax to this whole conversation immediately, Taylor. Rewind. We're going to edit this out. Okay. No, so we're not. Right. We're yes, going to no, keep no, this, no, this, 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 this in, is, Taylor. This is the brilliant idiot. So, so they're just going to have to hear why, this twice. Why was he talking about his sisters getting <laughs> well, rapid? We'll, we'll get to that, Schultz. We'll get to that. Let's, let's, let's hand it the homophobia part first. Okay. Dwayne, do you have that part? Here we go. Okay. That's all you do an interview with Vlad TV, and you said that uh, it, it would be very uncomfortable for you to listen to a gay rapper talking about kissing a dude. Did I say that? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you said you saw it, Charlemagne. I said, I said that. Yeah, you, you said, said you saw it on Vlad TV. I don't think I said that because. Wait, said, first of all, I said that. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out to shout out to one of my really my favorite people of all time in the world, Ricky, my stylist, who is a gay man. Don't okay. look to make it look. I am very comfortable with my sexuality. I am comfortable with the gay community. <laughs> that I believe in I all people. I will say I don't know exactly <laughs> how that got written, but I pro- you know Vlad <laughs> headlines be crazy. Yeah, I know they do yeah. be kind of well, crazy. Like you should watch it before you pull the headline. Yeah, no, no, no. My goodness. I was, listen, I was so wrong, all right? Now, by the way, I saw that headline somewhere, yeah. right? But I didn't actually listen to the audio clip, so I don't know if he actually said that or not. But that's why it's a hey, question. Bro. And when you ask a question in an interview, then a person can dismiss it. It's not like I said, Logic, you're homophobic. You said that you wouldn't kiss a person, yada, yada, yada. I don't think that. you why asked him like, a question. I think you just said it. I think you were like, I, you, you I, said I, in a no, Vlad I, interview. I, I lied. I did, a, I, I did an interview with Trick. I acted like I saw something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I was so sure <laughs> yeah, that yeah. whoever put this in my prep sheet yeah, yeah. had to have watched it, right? Yeah, yeah, whoever, yeah, yeah, whoever, yeah. Put, whoever put this in my prep sheet had to have watched it, so they had to know what they're talking Taylor? about. To say, no, it wasn't Taylor. That who wasn't was it? Taylor. I don't know who was doing the prayer. Probably was, it was definitely an intern, but I don't think it was Taylor. Oh, my years Lord. Ago. I, thought, had to be, I really thought you were about to drop one of them fuck... No, 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 no. Because okay. it's not their fault. That's my fault. That's <laughs> no, not their fault. This, this was like 2014, maybe I'll tell 2015. You did it. Some... No, I no, was no, never no, no. here that, when I wasn't there that yet. That wasn't saying you, babe. Because that's my fault. But that's what you do. You know, you trust the people around you. So if that's in your prep sheet and you see it and you're like, oh, that's interesting. But I brought it up as a question. or I lied and said I saw it. Right? And he was like, I don't think I necessarily said that. So if it pops back up that he did say that, then he's lying, right? But for in the meantime, I'm wrong. He's not I'm, even I, lying. He's like, I don't think I said that. I don't so think nobody's I said, lying. Well, he, well, you were lying about saying you saw I the I was lying about seeing it. So it's just everybody's <laughs> yeah. fucking bullshitting each yeah, other. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right? But yeah. in that instance, I, I, he's absolutely right. If he wants to say I was trying to label him homophobic and he want, that's worth some raps, cool. I'm not mad at that. Salute to you, Logic. Now, this part. This part has nothing to do with Logic a little bit because I saw Logic's interview to do with Rob, uh, with, with my man Rob Markman on Genius. And Logic said on Genius that, you know, he respects me and I res- he respects what I do, yada, yada, yada. But on the Internet, they took this clip. This shit has been going around for at least four or five years. 
they take this clip and it starts with, who raped your sister? And a lot of like, yo, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. So it makes it seem like I just pulled that out of my ass. I just pulled that out of the sky. When the reality is he mentioned someone sexually assaulting his sister twice in that interview. And he's rapped about it in his music, just like he talks about his father being on crack or whatever. So there's context to it. Let's yeah. play the clip again because people have forgotten about it. But now that they hear it, Taylor, your oh, moment to oh, shine. No, please, Go, Taylor. 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 Father was a Taylor. Okay, right? Oh, he was. He's doing good now. He's, he's, you know, he's now. sober now. But it's crazy. It's all about experience. That, that's why, honestly, me, because I don't, I don't smoke weed. I don't drink, which is fine. You can do whatever you do. And I think it's good in moderation. But me, you know, witnessing my mother getting her ass whooped by man as a, uh, as a, as a child, my, uh, dealing with the aftermath of my sisters being raped, things uh, like this. Do your family education. members get upset? That uh, you put their life out there, like you said, your sisters got raped. Mm-hmm. Your father was on great, crack. great question. I think um, I think that they understand because I've spoken to them. I don't out nobody. I don't. I have a lot of brothers and I have a lot of sisters. It's kind of a, a culmination of of all our stories as a whole. Yeah, I talk about it on the album. Who the hell raped your sisters? Oh man, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, it's a little yeah, too personal. Really? Now, Andrew, you're an honest person, right? <laughs> Andrew, you're an honest person. Yeah. Tell me if I was out of line. No. Why wasn't I out of line? Because I, I see people in context, right? I can understand if you just see that from the, the end where it's like, who raped, who the hell raped your sister? And I, I don't want to talk Yo, about that. I, I would even go so far as to say, I'm not saying this because you're my friend, because I, I think it's really funny when you uh, ask uh, questions that you don't mean to ask and I like making funny for it. <laughs> but that being said, if somebody brings up the fact that their family member was raped, and you don't follow up that question, doesn't that seem like you're being insincere in the interview? (laughs) Like, you're having dinner with somebody or you're having any kind of conversation. They bring up a traumatic thing out of nowhere that you didn't ask. They bring it up. And then you just go, well, anyway, what do you think is going to happen with the Super Bowl? Doesn't that seem a little weird? And they bring it up again. So I'm like, okay, clearly this person... Want to talk about it. And and when I when I asked him, I said, hey, you know, your um, you know, do your family members get mad at you? You know, when you very reasonable like your fathers are crack or your sister. That's their business. You know, You're raped. sharing it. Yeah. He, Logic actually said great question. <laughs> and then he answered what I asked him. So when I came back, I said, well, who the hell raped your sister? I asked that question because I just assume you've thrown it out there a couple of times. Maybe you want to. Maybe you want to out some family members or maybe you want to out the piece of shit mm-hmm. who did that to your sister. I don't know. But the fact that you said it twice in an interview and you've rapped about it is the reason I ask you. So, you know, it's, this has, that has nothing to do with logic, even though I feel like when he was in the interview with Rob Markman, logic, no, I didn't ask him that question out of context. And he know that. Like, he know I didn't just oh, randomly he ask s- him that question. He said that you asked him out of context. Well, he, he said that, you know, yeah, Charlamagne asked me wild shit like, you know, who raped my sister? Or what am I doing for the Black Lives Matter movement? Or he he said I was homophobic. I'm like, I, I didn't say you were homophobic. I was wrong. Can I ask you about a question? A, 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 yes. Because uh, this is where I thought you were going with it, and I don't know if you were. Mm-hmm. I thought that you were assuming that after he suggested that his mom was abused by his dad, that possibly his dad abused his sister. I was thinking it was something in the family. That's yeah. That's where I thought that's you it. were going. I was, with, yeah, I, I was just seemed... thinking it was something in the family. That's that's why I said, well, "Who the hell did you say?" That's what yeah. I was thinking. It was something in the family. It was about right. a family conversation and the dysfunction of his of family. family. Exactly. That's all. That's all. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to just say, "Hey, did, did your father rape your sister?" Or did yeah, a family yeah. member? You know what I mean? I was like, "Well, who the hell raped your sister?" Let me open it up. And he said he don't want to talk about it. Cool. It's not like I pressed the gas on it. All I'm simply saying is he mentioned it twice in the interview. That's why I asked it. The internet, you motherfuckers are evil because literally for the past four to five years, they st- it's, it's the same line. Let's flash back to when Charlemagne asked the worst question in interview history. <laughs> and it literally starts with me saying, who the hell raped your sister? <laughs> so that's like, yo, man, th- th- I got this thing, man. I want to, I- I'm, I'm going to post this later today. It's just a quote. And it's just a simple quote right here. The version of me you created in your mind is not my responsibility. So when people get really mad about me, mad at me about shit and say, oh, Charlamagne's a piece of shit and this and that, y'all created this version. Yeah. 
I'm not saying that I haven't given y'all plenty of ammo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just simply saying the times I've fucked up, yeah, yeah. let me own that and get on my ass. But y'all really be reaching and making shit up. And I just don't like um, I just don't like logic feeding into that. That's all. Because logic, no, I didn't ask him that out of context. But I mean, from the marketing I've seen so far, and it granted this is only the internet stuff that come up. I'm I'm not a uh you know a connoisseur of logic or his music or any of that stuff. Um and from everything I've seen, just in like regular interviews, it seems like a pretty reasonable dude. I don't know, nothing that really I, angers I me love, about him. I tease I like, him about the black thing, and because I, I understand he looks really white, so as long as he makes sure that everybody knows he's actually black, does he say the n word in any raps or anything like that? I don't know. Maybe he does. Like if next he did, I, next, I would next, make sure I would let everybody know I was half black if that was the case, right? And yeah, ne- next time I interview him, I'll start with that one. I'll be like, "So yeah. on your last album, you said the n word seventy two times." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many times would you have said it if you were full black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Salute so, to logic, though, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like. Um, I, I guess, didn't like. I guess what I was trying to say is that, like, it huh? seems to me like there's been a lot of like, I'm the victim in the PR of this new album. Like I just saw one thing pop up where he said that Joe Budden makes people want to kill themselves and stuff like that. And, and, and I was going to say that I didn't oh, like, yeah. uh, I didn't like that. He said that. Um, but if, if that's how he feels, he has every right to say, it. you know what right. I'm saying? And, 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 and I actually, I hit logic up, you know what I mean? I, cause my man, Rob Markman, Rob had said in the interview, he was going to connect us. So he, uh, he connected us over the weekend and we, we text back and forth a little bit and uh, we're, we're going to talk soon. But yeah, I don't like people feeling like that. Like I can't dismiss his feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't sit here and tell him what makes him f- feel like he wants to kill himself or what makes him depressed. You know what I mean? It's like, can't nobody tell me what makes me sad and what makes me depressed. So if it's easy to say, yo, have thick skin, have tough skin. But what if he doesn't? My racial skin might not be as tough as goddamn full hundred percent black or white. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, bro. I didn't. I don't and by know, the way, man. And by the way, I by think, the way, and by yeah. the way, hold real quick. I didn't have to say that just now. Yeah, I'm a work in progress, people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to say that. I didn't even have to say that. I don't even know why I said that. I couldn't resist. It was right there, and something was saying, "Don't say this. Don't say that right now. Don't say it. Don't say it." And I said it anyway. Yo, but, but can't we just? Can't we just say cut that shit out? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to dismiss mental illness and depression and anxiety and all these things. I come from a family that has tons of mental illness. I'm very familiar with it from a young age. I'm very familiar. That being said, some of this shit is like, yo, cut that shit out, bro. Cut uh, that shit nah, the you fuck can't do that. out. I'm sorry. You didn't get your nah. favorite pair of sneakers. You're depressed. Cut that shit out. You got a math test tomorrow. You got anxiety. Shut the fuck up. Cut that shit out. We can't enable too much of it. There's a lot of enabling going wrong and around. And maybe that's because like every correction is an overcorrection. Like maybe there was no awareness of mental health. So now there's an over awareness of mental health. And then maybe we'll settle somewhere in the middle. Maybe that's the case. So maybe this is just like a necessary, you know, uh, bridge that we have to cross in order to get where we want to be. But some of that shit is just cut it out, B. I I, w- I wish it was that easy, Schultz. And 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 the only, and the reason I can't dismiss that is because like I was talking about earlier, I don't know what gets people to that point to be now. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Like I don't know what gets you to that point now, to where you say, "Yo, you might want to end it all." But I can honestly say I can see where for these kids, it it it, it, poss- it can't possibly be easy, yo. Because imagine imagine dealing with that shit. Imagine dealing with just the anxiety and depression and the low self-esteem and insecurities that come with life. And we as human beings who are a species who always need validation, who always need to feel appreciated, who always need to feel loved. We go online and talk to all of these motherfuckers that don't give a shit about us. Mm. We express these emotions. And then literally it's thousands of people telling you, kill yourself. Nobody's asking you to be online though. That's a choice. that's no one's too. asking you to make music. Nobody's asking you to do albums. No one's asking you to monetize your life and exploit your life for your art. No one's asking you. And if you are willing to do that, you have to know the cost of that. It's like all these famous people that like are upset that the paparazzi follows them around. That's the cost of being famous. And if you don't want to pay that price, then you ain't going to got to be famous. No one asks you to be famous. No one I ever said, that. hey, Kim Kardashian or Brad Pitt or Sarah Jessica Parker or whatever. We want you to be famous. No one ever asked. Y'all wanted that shit. Unfortunately, it's not going to be just mansions and millions. There's going to be a couple things that are annoying that you got to deal with. 
some guy following you, you at a camera when you walk out of a restaurant having the best meal you've ever had in your life. I agree with that, but I think that when you deal with mental health struggles and you're not at that place of healing, you, 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 you may want to be in your life. All of that added pressure, all of that added judgment, all of that added opinion, it can push you. It can push you over the ledge. I get it. And I, and yeah, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. That's no, why I, say, I nobody can't. Nobody wants. Can't. Nobody wants. I don't want to see anybody hurt themselves. I don't want to see any of that kind of stuff. And you know, maybe I'm less sensitive than the average person just because I've dealt with the most severe versions of mental illness. When I when I hear people like talking about how anxious they are because it's gonna rain tomorrow, I'm like, man. But maybe I should have more empathy. Maybe I should be like, okay, they're learning what this is and they're going to be able to like, you know, partition that shit out and find out what the extreme I, versions I, are and what the what the little stuff I, is. I, I think you should have more empathy because you watched it. You watched the, the, the decline. Right. And you yeah. don't know how that happens. Yeah. So I have to have empathy for that. You know, and I've seen this happen to other people before. Like you just like, where did that decline come from? Yo, jazz. They, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like I have. Empathy, because I don't know what what drives people to that to that to that that level. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? So yep. it's like, yeah. As much as I would love to say, man, man, the fuck up, or you gotta have tough skin. Nah, I don't know, and I don't want to be responsible for you know what a person is feeling, even if my intentions weren't that. So that's that's actually one of the reasons, you know, I I I, I can't wait to chop it up with him. And that, you know, he when when Rob put us together, that's what he said. He was like, man, I really appreciate everything you do in regards to mental health. He even said that in the Rob interview, but he was mm. just like, yeah, I would love to just talk with you about, you know, family and life. And man, when I see stuff like that, it's just like, who would I be to throw my middle finger to that kid? I'll uh, be like, nah, fuck that kid. I'm a, I'm a 42 year old grown man. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Like I have people around me in my life that lean on me in that way. Even though I might be going through my own shit, they lean on me in that way. And even though he, he's not somebody I consider a friend or I don't, I don't know him like that. If he's, man enough to reach out in that way. Come on, man. Of course I'm going, I'm going to reply back and have a conversation with that. See, I almost said half a brother. I'm an <laughs> asshole. I'm trying here. I almost said, I literally, I literally thought about it. Did you see my brain working like don't <laughs> fucking say it? You said it. You didn't just I think about it. I fucking said it. <laughs> why did I say, why the fuck did I say that? That's why nobody takes me serious. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's why that's that's exactly why nobody takes me serious. But I pr trust me, my intentions are pure. And um, salute the logic. We 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 gonna chop it up and we gonna build soon. I, I really want to just bring everybody together in that space that's having these conversations about like mental health in a real way. Logic mm. and G Herbo and you know Wale. Like I would love to have everybody just come together and sit down with different mental health professionals like Dr. Rita Walker and. You know, Dr. Alfie Noble and uh, Dr. Jessica Clemens and just everybody yeah. just come together and let's just let's just chop it up and build, create a safe space for people going through that shit right now, man. For real. We should. Yeah, we should That's organize all, something man. where we get everybody together and I just go, yo, cut that pussy shit <laughs> out. You Shut know, the fuck man up. the fuck up. <laughs> Shut up. Stop bitching and whining. Y'all a bunch of millionaires. Jesus Deal with that Christ. shit. And then at the end, money have, don't matter. We have Donald Trump at the end to say it is what it is. It, it is, is what it is, y'all. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. By the way, I can tell you something though. As crazy as it sounds, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes that shit works. What man I've up? Told, right? I've, I've told y'all that story about the one time where I really, 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 really thought I was gonna kill myself, and that was two thousand three or four. And this when I was like really into like I was doing youth ministry at Muhammad Mosque number thirty eight, and I was really trying to be on the righteous path because my now wife had left me, and I was like I'm gonna be the man that she wants me to be. So I was really heavy in the religion and spirituality and doing youth ministry at the mosque and going to the Baptist church. I was all over the fucking place, bro. Like I didn't know whether I wanted a bean pie or a Bible. I was just everywhere with it. Right. And I'm, 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 I'm at my, my boy's house where I'm not going to say his name anymore. Cause he's married now. And I don't know if he's told this story to his wife, but if you're a long time brilliant idiot listener, you probably know who I'm talking about. So we at the house and you know, we end up having a great time with two women Menage a trois action is going down. And I thought that I was going to hell. I was like, I am going to hell. I just had sex really? and I'm 
you know, I, I'm trying to give my life to God, but I'm out here getting drunk and having sex. I was like, I don't deserve to live. Like I was on it like that. And I don't know if it was my, my now wife or my, my, my boy, Frosty. Somebody called my pops and my pops drove an hour and a half from Mount's Corner. Came to Columbia, South Carolina. We sitting outside the step, uh, the steps of the apartment I was living in. And I'm telling him what happened. And my daddy looked at me and my daddy said, so you mean to tell me? I drove an hour and a half. Cause you got drunk and got some pussy. Mm-hmm. You want to kill yourself? Cause you got drunk and got some pussy. Well, God damn it. Where the lick in the motherfucking women at? Cause you got me stressed the fuck out now. Hey, what the fuck is wrong with you? And that, for whatever reason, that put everything back in perspective. <laughs> Like, Yo, he was like, he was, that put everything back in perspective. What his did next Duval line, say? Listen, his next line after that was, "Bruh, you ain't gonna always get shit right. Sometimes people fuck up. Like, what the, what the fuck, man? Smile, bitch. <laughs> Smile, bitch. Come out. Like, yo, it's that simple. Smile, bitch. You know what it is, though. I had an expectation of myself. There you go." And I feel like I let myself down. There it is. If you Not can't change the situation, change your perspective, bro. Exactly. Change your perspective so, on that menage a trois. Now you look back at that, you were like, I was pounding that push. I don't even, you know, I guess. I, 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 I look back on it now. And oh my God. what I should have done in that moment was take my ass to the church, confess all my sins, and, and, and repent. Okay? That's what I should have done. But what did you do? Smelled your fingers all night. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Dab is probably right next to you. Hey, let me, let me smell that fingers too. <laughs> is that what y'all do? <laughs> what? Smell our fingers with our dads? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, that's what y'all do. Oh, nah, smell the funniest, our hey, hey, the funniest part, right? Yeah. I'm talking to my boy and I'm like, man, I can't be doing that no more. He said, doing what? I said, man, sleeping with, sleeping with, you know, different women like I want to get married and do x y and z and I'm like yo it it didn't bother you the way they was talking to us because you know they was like get your ass in here take your pants like that type shit and he was like no (laughs) (laughs) smile bitch (laughs) come on I was gonna say it didn't bother you let's go (laughs) it didn't bother me who's this dude (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Ooh, that's by the way, God, by the way, by the way, by the way, that's the hood me? though. Hey, that's the me. hood is the hood is like that though. The hood is like this nigga, this nigga <laughs> tripping, cause this nigga man. <laughs> Come on, bro. We over this, bro. Shake it off. You just gotta <laughs> shake it off. You can't shake off a little threesome. It, it didn't bother you that you sound so concerned. You don't even know where I was at in my life at that time. No, I, was I don't. Literally, I was in the church. I was in the mosque. I was trying to get into heaven. <laughs> You're doing and everything I, you could to get to heaven. And then You're I realized, both. man, now I understand this whole repentance and forgiveness thing. Because, boy. Sinning is fun. It ain't fun. It's just too easy not to do it. it wasn't, and is it a sin? Is it a sin because you have sex? Say again? Is it yes. Yes. Like you have sex? It yes, it's a sin. Who says who? God. I is it sin if you were cheating? <laughs> Hold on. Is it sin if you were cheating? Yes. I wasn't cheating. It's me and my, me and my girl were broke up. It's not a sin oh, to so cheat. Then why were you upset? Hold what up. The fuck? Because I was trying to be the man that I wanted her to, that I know she wanted. He was trying to so do some I, gay so, shit. So I don't practice bad habits. <laughs> yo, yo, Wait, just on, be honest, y'all were together, <laughs> but you're trying to be the man that she... Yeah, because in my mind, vision, Taylor, vision. I knew that we would eventually be together. Okay. Right, so I wanted to prove to God, Man, come on, bro, that I could be the person come that is worthy on, of this woman that I prayed for my whole life. Yeah, I told my wife that last night. I told my wife, I said, I love you. I told her that this morning, matter of fact. No, mm. I said, I, I kissed her and I said, mm. I love you. I said, I prayed for you, meaning I prayed for her. About what? What'd you pray? I prayed for her. I prayed to have that type of relationship. Oh, I prayed. I, I that prayed for you. you not not I prayed like I prayed for you. I prayed. Now was that before or after you. you destroyed those boxes down there in South Carolina? <laughs> this guy. <man. laughs> listen, 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 
Was that, when were you praying? <laughs> did you did you spray some Holy Ghost <laughs> as, as part of that prayer? Oh, this guy, man. I was just trying Father, to be a good man. Son, Holy Ghost, oh, give it. me a woman that would do nothing that these ladies are doing right now. <laughs> The crazy part is I take those oaths Just like I took an oath with myself In October of 2016 Uh To be completely faithful to my wife Mm -hmm. And I am that So honey it took you So good that's what I'm talking about. Light it up. Light yeah, up. Man, I'm not gonna light, light it up. Weed. Hit no, the no, weed. Tell me, Taylor. Bro. What? I want to no, hear. I want to hear you, Taylor. Taylor, hit it. You got anxiety <laughs> from that time, but y'all were still together. You were, and you cheated and stuff like that. So why didn't you was, feel I, bad? No, I was get, I was getting anxiety then too. I was just I was just testing the waters. You know what I'm See, saying? What? I was I, I was pushing I was pushing against what I knew was wrong. Okay. And that's why I was ne- I wasn't in a good headspace. I knew. What yeah, I were those girls in a good headspace? I knew, head space? I knew, I knew oh. cheating on my wife was absolutely positively wrong. I knew that. I knew that. I know, <laughs> but how come you didn't have like anxiety? Like you didn't feel. I did. Thing? It was terrible. But then why'd you do it again then? Because that poon on me feels good on me. <laughs> 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 I, will, I will neither confirm I nor deny. That, face I face. Face. <laughs> that, hey, bro, that punani nani, tsunami nami. What's that song? Yo, we just, yo, we don't be knowing. Yo, men don't be knowing. We, we don't, don't be know why. No, I know why. I know why. We I don't, don't be know knowing, why. except when he knows. No. You know what I, I mean? Know. Now he knows, but know we don't why. be knowing. Tell you know us why. why. You know why? You, gotta feel, you feel the type of way when she has sex. I had a fragile ego. Ah. I was insecure. I had imposter syndrome. Mm. I thought I had high self-esteem, but it really, I had low self-esteem and I was feeding my ego with those other women. That's what that was. Because I always say men cheat for ego, women cheat for emo, which is emotional reason. Yeah. It was all ego. Because sometimes as men, we think that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be out here knocking them all down. Until you get to that point in your life where you realize, like, nah. Wait a minute. Emo stands for emotional? You didn't know that? I thought emo was like, eat me out. Shut up. Oh, my God. I thought this whole time it was like, <laughs> your boyfriend or husband isn't eating you out, so you're cheating on a dude because he'll go down and eat the puss. There's a good joke there. There's a good, listen, ho, show, seriously, listen. There's a good, there's a good oral <laughs> sex joke with ego and emo. Okay, okay. Because ego could be eat. Eat girls out uh-huh. or eat, eat guys out. Eat guys what, out. Yeah. There or we go. Eat me out. Like there's something there there's with the something whole ego there. emo thing. I was I don't workshopping know. it. I was workshopping it. Yeah, something there. Mm. The moral of the story yeah. is uh sometimes you gotta try something new before you commit to your old thing. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it, baby. I still got it. I'm here, baby. Ain't never left. Smile, bitch. Oh my God. The moral of the story is: be faithful to your women. Yeah. That's part of. Hey, that's part of being mentally healthy. I don't. uh, All you young boys, do your thing. Mm. But when you get to a certain age and you realize you got a lot to lose, and by a lot, I mean your wife and possibly your family. You don't want that. And when Taylor talks about the anxiety, yes, the anxiety of watching my father. Lose his family because of his infidelity. There Watching uncles of mine lose their families because of their infidelity. That definitely gave me anxiety. And I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. Mm. But that is That's when I made a conscious decision to really sit down and mind my motherfucking business. And I am going on four years. Let's go. Faithfulness, baby. Let's go. And yes, I want a motherfucking medal for that. Let's go. Why shouldn't That's I get a medal That's why you're freezing now. No, you don't get a medal. Anyway, look, why? guys. Not for four years. Guys. You get medals for four years of sobriety. Yeah, Do you, you get medals for weeks of That's, sobriety. You cannot compare. And vagina's way worse than drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's true. That's true. Yes. You've been sober from girls. Really? You've been hober. 
Homer <laughs> Simpson. It's not the same thing. Homer it's not Simpson. the same thing. Yo, wait, that's Homer wait, Simpson. Wait, we talking about Homer pussy? Simpson. Are we just talking about pussy? Around, I get around other pussy and I go, oh. <laughs> and then oh. I fade away into the oh. bushes. <laughs> then I fade away into the bushes and go home to my family, Taylor. Yo. You wish you had a Homer Simpson. Bro, you know what's crazy, Charlamagne? It's you went from fading into the bushes to fading away from them. <laughs> You get it. <laughs> like, you put, <laughs> you put your dick into um, the bush. I'm just fading into a different kind of bush, that's all. <laughs> there we go. Look, I fade into a different kind guys, of bush. Um, I got to go. Let's do it. Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're right. absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.